Our UK-based call centre is always on hand to assist you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. Head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Here at Sewing Street, we only charge one P&P throughout the day. You can add as many items to your basket and check out and still only be charged once. Once you've checked out the first time and want to order again, you simply add the item to the basket and click on the Combine Order button. Remember, standard P&P is £3.95. Charges may differ for outside the UK. Or upgrade to our premium option for £5.95 on certain items. Shopping made easy at Sewing Street. Good morning, good morning everybody. It's Christmas. I mean, it's not exactly Christmas, but it's nearly Christmas. And this is my last day at Sewing Street before the big day. So thank you for joining me. Uh, I'm Stuart Hillard, this is Sewing Street, and we're gonna start as we always do with our early birds. It should be a robin, surely. Should, uh, is it just me? Is it just? Anyway, what's our early bird? Well, machine embroiderers, I am talking to you. This one's for you. It's a pack of three tubes of Gutterman pre-wound bobbins for machine embroidery. So if you do machine embroidery, if you don't, you need to get into it. It's fabulous. Um, but what it is, you get, you get pre-wound bobbins. These are, you only need white and black for machine embroidery because the tension is such that you don't see any of the bobbin thread on the top of your work ever anyway. And your bobbin thread for machine embroidery is very fine, very fine in fact. I think it's probably, is it a hundred weight? Something like that. It's incredibly fine. You can't even really see it. Do you see it? It's like a, a hair. And, um, and that sort of pulls the top thread to the back a little bit. So in this pack, you get two packs of white bobbins and one pack of black. And there's, there's six in each. Now, on each one, you get 120 metres. Do you know, these bobbins go on forever. It's such fine thread and they're big bobbins. It will fit any standard embroidery machine. Um, this is fantastic. Fantastic Gutterman thread, of course. And not £20.97. It's our early bird today, so check this out. Ooh, now that is tempting. That's less. That's quite a bit less than a pound per bobbin, isn't it? Because you're getting 18 bobbins. Gosh, that's a lot less than a pound a bobbin. Um, you, get, you get 18 bobbins. 37, 77, thank you. 77 pence a bobbin, brilliant. They last for ages, ages, ages. They're, um, they're like cardboard bobbins and they'll fit any embroidery machine. Um, really, really good, really good. No plastic, you've got your tubes obviously, but keep those, put things like used machine needles and hand sewing needles in those. Um, but yeah, really good value. 13.98 for today's early bird. Now these you can use in, I've, I've got a brother embroidery machine, but whatever embroidery machine you've got, they'll fit. Um, and as I say, the color is really not important. Um, 
I use cream, I use like a pale gray or a black. I think you just match it with your background fabric, basically. You have your light background fabric and your dark. Um, it's much, much lighter in weight, much lighter in weight, your bobbin thread. So effectively what happens is it pulls the top thread slightly to the, the back of your work. So you never ever see that bobbin thread on the top which is why the colour doesn't matter. And also as well, when you're doing your embroideries, it might, you might have 10, 12, 15 different colours. You, you wouldn't want to be changing your bobbin and you don't have to change your bobbin colour. You just leave one bobbin in and you just keep changing the top thread to do your design. Super easy, super easy to use um, and compatible with all machines. Love that. You get... 12 of the white pre-wound bobbins and one of the black. And um, I'll just get one out again. It's like one, getting one of the sets for free, in fact, when you look at the price. Um, that is absolutely jam-packed. That's fuller than any bobbin you could ever wind on your own machine. Um, they're absolutely jam-packed. It's the kind of thing you wouldn't want to have to stop, would you? Halfway through an embroidery project. Start changing your bobbin. Just pop one of these in and they just seem to go on and on forever. Really brilliant. That's a great early bird. Nice to see something for the embroiderers today. If you're getting into your embroidery like I have recently, got my brother. Have you got the brother embroidery machine? They're fab. Absolutely brill. Need to say a little uh, good morning. Marie says, hi, John. It's a good start. <laughs> morning, morning, morning. John Scott here. Uh, hi, John. Stuart, Merry Christmas. Merry nearly Christmas. Merry nearly Christmas, Marie. Uh, Claire says, good morning, Stuart and all. Fabulous jumper. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Look, it's a Christmas tree, but a rainbow. Uh, Steph says, morning, in bed with Stuart. Bless. Uh, lovely jumper. Thank you, darling. Uh, Hilary says, Merry Christmas, one and all. Oh, it's lovely. Merry Christmas, Hilary. Um, Patricia says, Good morning, Street. Lovely from Blackpool. Hope you have a lovely Christmas and New Year. Oh, you too as well. Really looking forward to Christmas. It's going to be ace, isn't it? Just have a lovely few days with family and friends. Eat, drink and be merry. For tomorrow we may diet. That's what I always say. Um, keep going through for your early bird. This morning, it's 18 pre-wound bobbins from Gutterman. So these are pre-wound for machine embroidery. So pop this in your, in your bobbin. You don't have to change the colour as you're changing colours on top. It doesn't matter whether you're using black or red or purple, whatever. It doesn't matter. Leave the bobbin in. Just keep going. You won't see your bobbin thread on the top at all. It's very, very fine. So it won't build up a lot of extra sort of bulk or weight on the back of your, your embroidery either. It's another reason why it's really, really light. Um, the, because the fabric, the, the, the thread is so fine, the bobbins seem to go on forever. And pre-wound bobbins always have a ton more thread on them than regular. I mean, when I fill my bobbin, with something like Gutterman Sew All Thread, I can get about 60 meters. It's slightly more than half a reel of thread onto a bobbin, 60 meters. These have 120 meters on them. So double what I can normally get on a bobbin. So <laughs> there you go. That's how long your bobbin's gonna last, twice as long. Two white, one black. Don't forget to go through for that. Right, um, how to shop, how to shop. Uh, you know the drill. If you don't know the drill, if you're brand new to Surrey Street, welcome, we're a friendly bunch. Uh, go onto our website, www.surreystreet.com. And then once you get there, you can click on watch live and then you can watch us live. You can watch us on online, you can watch us on the app, you can watch us on your smartphone. Um, and then you'll be able to see a little little box for getting in touch. You can send us a little message there if you'd like. We love your messages. Uh, Marie says, I actually wanted to type ho, 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 and it came out as hi, John. Sorry. Oh, Maria, that's adorable. I love it. I love it. That's so cute. And then if you scroll down on the website, you'll see all the fabric that's coming up 
on the show. Now, let's do our menu. Let's do our menu. Let's see what's coming up today because we've got loads to get through. We're starting off this hour, flannel fabrics. If you like cuddly, cozy, brushed cotton, absolutely gorgeous. We've got a brand new range from Moda. We've got some gorgeous baby flannel and I've also got some beautiful brushed cottons for dressmaking. So a bit of everything. Now at nine o'clock, Susie Duncan is here with her pinwheels quilt and cushion duo. It's gorgeous. It's beginner friendly. You're going to love it. Look at that. Like a mosaic already selling on pre-order. We've got four great value kits and you can buy the pattern on its own. It's beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. Are you kidding me? That quilt kit is under £40 with the pattern. Oh my goodness, that's fab. Well, jump on the website, folks, have a little look. That is really good value, my goodness. Now at 10 o'clock, quilting rulers. I'm going to be demoing some of my favourites. So if you've any questions, queries, get them in. At 11 o'clock, it's the Anne Keen and Higging Bonjour quilt with Susie Duncan. Um, her French is much better than mine. We did consider doing the whole hour in French, but I would literally have spent the whole hour going like this. That's all I can do. That's my French. Done. Uh, and then at 12 o'clock, we've got dressmaking tools and fabrics. Um, that does not in any way reflect the gorgeous bargains we've got. We've got loads of dressmaking fabrics by the half metre. And they're all, Ben, all... Price crashes? There's lots. There's lots of bargain fabrics in that hour. Lots of bargain fabrics in that hour. So it might be worth shopping ahead. Right, okay, let's get started, shall we? And also Sandra, good morning, lovely Stuart, she says. Love the look this morning. Sandra in still soggy Glasgow. Aww. We'll stay with us here. We'll keep it bright and breezy. Right then, let's start with our flannel fabrics. Now this right here is a brand new flannel range from Moda. It's called Lakeside Gathering. And, you know, flannel fabric instantly gives that sort of hit of being in a log cabin in the woods, snuggly, cosy, warm. But flannel fabric is by no means a winter only fabric, because quite frankly, unless it's the hottest day of the year, who doesn't like being snuggly and warm and cosy? I mean, it's a lovely sensation. These are gorgeous tactile fabrics. They just have a very softly brushed surface layer. So they just have a little bit more snuggle appeal than that sort of crisp cotton that we're used to. But they cut and piece and you can use them in exactly the same way as your regular quilt weight cottons. They just have extra snuggle to them. So keep that in mind, N nothing alien here. And also, please don't think that you can't mix flannel with regular quilt weight cotton because you absolutely can, all right? So now this is a fabulous bundle right here. You get 16 different fabrics, eight meters in total, and you get a whole meter for free within that. You're saving 17.98. 17.98 there. The price is 125.98 for this. And you can have a split pay of 62.99. There's two split pays. 62.99 today. We'll send you the bundle. Use it, love it, make gorgeous things. And then next month, 62.99 comes out of your account and you're done. Now, let's have a little uh, dive in here and see what we've got in this lovely new range, Lakeside Gathering. So we've got some lovely, soft, self-coloured plaids there. Kind of a light blue and a mid blue. Um, some really gorgeous plaids. I think when you think of uh, flannel fabrics, I think we instantly think of kind of plaids and, you know, cosy, almost lumberjacky shirts. Got a nice cut, sort of quite a masculine feel to, to these flannels, um, or gender neutral. So love that. And very, very easy to work with. Um, a nice sort of cream solid there, just to add a bit of lightness and brightness within your piecing. Um, 
gorgeous stripe there. And uh, what's really nice as well is <coughs> it has almost like a twill. I don't know if you can see that, but it has almost like a twill weave. It's not, it's printed, but it has a little bit all oh, herringbone sort of look. Isn't that lovely? Gorgeous. Rustic, yeah. This is lovely. There's like a chevron print in three different colours. The navy, the cream and the sort of blue mix. Love that. So many different things you could make with this. So many, yeah, so many different things. Uh, lovely little bit of grey there, it's a wobbly check. Um, now this might be my favourite, these two. Absolutely gorgeous effects there. Like a lovely, almost like a tweedy wool look um, in the navy and in the cream. And then you've also got a couple of hound's tooth check. Uh, one in black, that's yummy and one in blue. And then last of all, you've got these two, almost like a faux denim, isn't it? In a sort of dark denim, denim and a mid-toned denim. Loads of lovely. Um, I think things like, I mean, a lovely bed quilt in this would be super snugly and warm. Uh, a lap quilt, if you get sort of a bit, cold on the sofa, a lovely lap quilt just to throw over your knees, that would be gorgeous. Um, you could make some really snuggly cushions, some book pillows with this, that would be lovely as well. Or some, just some cushions and pillows would be yummy. And of course, because you're going to put your face on them in bed, you know, super snuggly, super snuggly. <clears throat> Yeah, don't think flannel like toweling. It's not like that, it's not like a flannel. It's this lovely soft, it's almost got a kind of felty or not quite velvety feel, but it's that sort of feeling. It's just very smooth. Yes, it's almost like peach skin, sort of almost like a fuzz. It's lovely, or a mole skin. It's that kind of feel. But I mean, super easy to sew with. Now my top tips when you're working with flannel, um, you can pre-wash it if you want to. Um, that's personal choice. But certainly I would steam iron it. So flannel tends to be a very, very slightly looser weave than quilt weight cotton. And that's to allow it to be sort of brushed and fluffed up after it's been woven, because that's the process. So a nice hot steam iron just to kind of pre-shrink the fabric before you start. And then when you're sewing, use a slightly longer stitch length than you would normally. So if you normally use a 2.4, just go maybe 2.6, just slightly longer. If you're top stitching or quilting, go slightly longer as well. Um, use a nice sharp needle. I like a microtext, a 75 or an 80, something like that when you're sewing with it. And um, certainly when you're doing things like top stitching or quilting, use your walking foot, pin well, um, because uh, flannel fabrics have a reputation for kind of slightly creeping. And not so much that way, but more kind of moving apart. So when you put your two layers together to sew your patchwork, pin them well so you don't end up with one layer kind of slipping back slightly as you're working. Do those things, it's an absolute dream. It's lovely to work with. Uh, so that's our mega bundle. Let's go through them individually. Happy to just go with me? All right, fine. Let's start with ending one zero, WZ one zero. So it's that lovely rich blue check. 899 and a half metre. These would be gorgeous if you're thinking dressmaking. Dressing gown, pajama bottoms, absolutely gorgeous. Snuggly, soft, beautiful. The inside of the flannel, by the way, is regular, it feels like regular quilt weight cotton. It's no different. So it's not going to irritate your skin or feel funny. Um, the outside, because some of the ones you can buy, they're a bit, I find them a little bit strange. The feeling on your legs is a lot of static. Not like, not this at all. 
it's just lovely regular quilt weight cotton and then a just brushed surface. So yeah, I think PJs or a dressing gown or a little set in those would be yummy. Let's do the dark navy now as well. This ends 5-1. Classic really, this, isn't it? Absolutely classic. Or maybe something like a little night shirt. Oh, can you imagine a night shirt and a wee willy winky? I'm playing with my pom-pom now. A little wee willy winky hat would be so cute. It would be adorable. It would be lovely for a little one. Or something like, you know, the little baby, um, not baby grow, what do they call them? Like a little fertilizer sack that you put babies in. That sounds wrong. That sounds wrong. <laughs> Do you know the things I mean? Do they call them grow bags? <laughs> They're like a little grow bag and you put a baby in <laughs> And then they fruit. No, I don't know what I'm talking about this morning. But they are cute. Things like that would be lovely. Or if you wanted to just do a real like quick quilt you, or a throw, something like that, just lay it up, maybe with something like a polar fleece on the back, no wadding. That on the top, polar fleece on the back, pom-pom trim around the outside edge, and just quilt it simply or tie it. It'd be yummy, be yummy. Right, a stripe, a stripe, ending 5-9. Um, for your bindings, for your sashings, for an envelope back for a cushion. It's just so smart, isn't it? Almost like a pinstripe. It's lovely, isn't it? It's lovely. Mo has got in touch. Morning, handsome. She says, thank you. Uh, Merry Christmas, like the jumper. Thank you. Thank you. I bought it for like a pre-Christmas dinner. I was teaching a workshop in bread. It was lovely. Um, Jill says, good morning, Stuart. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you, my darling. Kirsty says, morning, Stuart. Merry Christmas. I've made my cousin's four-year-old daughter a lap quilt for Christmas with the Lewis and Irene flannel that you had on earlier in the year. It's so snuggly. Make sure it has a flannel backing so it's snuggly on both sides. That's a really good point, Kirsty. Something like that on the back. Beautiful. Uh, Jean's going to touch say, morning, Stuart. The old is amongst us may know it as Wincyet. Oh, Jean, Win a Wincyet nighty. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. And do you remember the old, um, in the 70s, the candy stripe flannel sheets that you used to be? And there was like pink and lilac and soft green and blue little stripes. Oh, no, it was lovely. It was, lo and everybody had them. And you only have to see one now as an adult to go, oh, it's 1974. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's lovely. Um, quick update on the mega bundle, by the way, stock wise, I've got less than 15. I've got less than 15. Well done if you've got yours. It's a brand new range. Perfect just to make a, a quilt. Now you could go real simple, six and a half or eight and a half inch squares, patched together pretty randomly. That would be beautiful. Cross hatch quilt it or, or outline quilt the squares, something like that with a walking foot. Keep it nice and simple. You could do big half square triangles or hourglass units. You could do a rail fence design just three or four strips sewn together in a block that would be gorgeous too or you could pick your favorite quilt pattern and do that I mean just yeah lovely lovely stuff and if you wanted to do something like my Galleria quilt pattern I would use quilt weight cotton for the sashings and then the flannel for the feature squares throughout that design so you can mix and match don't be afraid to do that um, Jan's got in touch to say, good morning, Stuart and team. A bit late today. You're not, my darling. Uh, as I was mopping up the tea I spilt on the bedside table. I mean, the tragedy is the, the cup of tea has been lost. I mean, the table, you know, you can wipe that. But all that lovely tea gone to waste. Um, oh, Jan says, I've still got those striped sheets. We use them to protect the carpet when we're decorating. Oh, Jan, or somebody, please send in a picture. I want everyone here to, nobody here knows what I'm talking about because they're all too young. But please send in a picture if you can find it of those old, candy striped flannel sheets. Amanda says, morning, Stuart. Can I wish you a Merry Christmas? You can. A Merry Christmas to you, darling. Still watching from hospital, but my operation went well. That is brilliant news. I'm hoping to be discharged today. Hurrah! Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. 
I keep my mum was in hospital last year and I keep on referring to her, her, her being let out like she was in prison, which I think is how she felt. Um, but it's discharged, isn't it? Oh, fingers crossed, my darling. Right, let's move on. Can I do my favourite stripes? Right, this ends 08, O-N-08. This is um, gorgeous. That would be lovely, actually. Wouldn't that be nice to do something like um, dungarees? Imagine dungarees. Oh, yeah. Just like a light flannel dungaree. Just beautiful, isn't it? It's beautiful. I love it. You could also use this for a bag. A bag would be beautiful. Just softly quilted. Oh, dungarees. Wide leg trousers or, um, or a nice simple top. You know, maybe a boat neck top. Emily's got in touch. Morning, Stuart and everyone. My mum has a photo of my brother as a shepherd in his primary school nativity with a cut up piece of one of those striped sheets as his head covering. That's adorable. I love it. Derek's got in touch. Good morning, Stuart. I remember those striped sheets. They made a lovely Arabian fancy dress. There you go. Everyone was cutting up their sheets. <laughs> Gemma says, good morning, Stuart. Can you say hello to my mum in Torquay? Of course I will. Gemma's mum in Torquay. Mwah! Merry Christmas to you, my darling. I love Torquay. I love Torquay. Torquay is one of those lovely places. The seafront, it's just a lovely seafront, isn't it? And you can just walk along. There's, there's nothing there. There's nothing like tacky or horrible or, you know, it's just a beautiful seafront. It's so elegant. It's so lovely. It's the English Riviera. Riviera. <laughs> the Riviera. <laughs> Ending 7-4. Luscious. Absolutely good. Again, a dressing gown. So beautiful. Love that, love that. This would be lovely actually to use for a bit of um, borrow. This range actually, you could do a bit of borrow with it, couldn't you? If you've got Susan Briscoe's Borrow book, there's the most gorgeous hand ten jacket in that. You could make that with this flannel. Ray. Oh, that's the one. That's the one. That would be beautiful. Or yesterday, did you get the Tamarack jacket pattern? Quilted, collarless jacket we had things like denim we had light denim and things like that to make it in quilted jacket adam brooks oh it's beautiful but this any of these either patchworked or more plain and simple gorgeous absolutely gorgeous beautiful that would be lovely now I'm feeling inspired. Julie says, can you say good morning to my daughter Vicky Bennett? She's in bed with COVID. Oh, Vicky. Get well soon, darling. Hope you're feeling better soon. Oh. Michaela says, morning, Stuart. Lovely to see you again. Thank you. I am loving the hat. Well, I keep treating it like it's long hair, like a ponytail that I can swish. It's like a, it's like a high pony, isn't it? <laughs> Sandra says, my mum had candy striped flannelette sheets, much better than the bry nylon one she got. Oh, nylon sheets. Can you imagine? Yuck. No. Oh, ponytail sticking out now. There we go. There we I'll just rearrange. Right. Checks. This ends 5-6. It's lovely. And they're all, they've all got this sort of brush surface. They're all, they're all um, primitive gatherings who are one of my favourite mode of designers. They do lovely sort of primitive country style fabrics. And usually their ranges are quite sort of deep, dark, 
blues, browns, reds, greens, purples, and they're all very dark colors. These are all kind of lovely and light and fresher, gorgeous snuggly with that sort of brushed cotton finish. Really super, aren't they? What would you make with them? Bruce? Ending four, five. It's about a little snuggly, snuggly blanky. Oh, that's something I can't get out of my head, Bruce. Ben just said to Bruce, why don't you, what about some nice pajama bottoms? And Bruce said, I only wear a top. I don't wear any bottoms. Can we have a little wave from the gallery, by the way? So everyone can see Bruce. He's just wearing a top. No, he is wearing bottoms today. There he is, doing the wave of shame. There he is. And there's Ben. Hey, Ben. Hiya. There they are. <laughs> it's like you're on blankety blank, Bruce. Well done. Right, that's that. Don't forget to go through for the mega bundle, will you? Make yourself a big saving. Now, those gorgeous chevrony stripes next. Let's do GA52. Mm. This is almost like, um, like a sort of twisted rope effect in the chevron. It's lovely. You could fussy cut this. So if you think about these strips where the stripe is going one way, you could get some amazing effects piecing with fabric like this. Or if you cut it here, you could get some amazing effects. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous. You can see the quilt now. It's lovely. Fiona's got in touch. Fiona moved house yesterday to Filey. And she says, morning, Stuart. My hubby, Paul, and I are watching you from our air beds in our new home in Filey. Hurrah! The furniture arrives today. Yay! Loving the jumper. And I could do with a flannelette nighty right now. You have to make your own. <laughs> oh, I'm glad the move went well. Welcome to your new home. Uh, some messages. Uh, morning, Stuart. Happy Christmas. Hope you have the best time. That's from Jules in Buckingham. Thank you, darling. You too. Happy Christmas. Oh, hi, Stuart. Can you wish my mum, Audrey, a happy Christmas? She's been working hard with all the big day prep. Marie. Oh, of course. Audrey. Audrey. Mwah. Merry Christmas to you. Well done for all that. Now, get the others to do something. Come on. Put your feet up. I'm very lucky, actually. I'm just getting catered for over Christmas. Hi, Stuart, says Sue in Beeston. Uh, candy striped pillowcases with a gathered frill all round. Beautiful. The cotton was fab quality and lasted for years. It certainly did, Sue. Those things never wore out, did they? And if they did, you cut them and you did sides to middle, didn't you? With your sheets. Right, next one, this is EB12. This beautiful, it's so lovely and crisp. What about making a Sandy Miller Chip Masaki teddy bear using flannels? Isn't, wouldn't that be lovely? I mean, teddy bears are snuggly anyway. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Do you imagine that? Or I love book pillows. I love book pillows. And you know, I have anything that encourages children to read or adults to read and having a snuggly flannel or brushed cotton book pillow that you can really properly snuggle up with, with a book or a comic or a magazine or a cookbook or anything else that you like to sit and read. Oh, that would be yummy. You seeing licorice all sorts, Ben? Are you hungry? <laughs> Next up, ending 9-8. This is that same chevron stripe, but in this wonderful warm tan. Isn't that lovely? Just lovely and cosy. Oh, it's so lovely getting all these messages. Is everybody feeling a bit Christmassy now? 
It's John, isn't it, on Christmas Day? I th I'm going to try and ring in. I'm going to try and ring in and say hi. And who's his guest? Sandra from Santangle. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, it's going to be lovely. Yeah, I'm going to ring in. I'm going to ring in. I just have to remember, because we've got mum staying over Christmas and we're going to Nottingham on Christmas Day. So we are, we are. My sister-in-law lives in Nottingham. She's catering for, I think, 19 of us. And she and her partner, Andy, are absolutely a magnificent pair in and out of the kitchen. Um, but they've done Christmas before and they just, they do it brilliantly. They don't want or need help with anything. No one has to do the washing up. It is so indulgent they are absolutely wonderful um really looking forward to spending time with them and andy has a den at the end of the garden that has all lovely like furry throws and cuddly cushions and he's got a record deck down there and his record collection and we just escape down there you know because you have to sometimes and we sit and listen to music so that's going to be lovely yeah, oh, it's a lovely house. Right, next up, let's do the Denimi ones. This ends 6-7, JW 6-7. Um, again, I do think a lot of these would be very nice for dressmaking. Do a nice little flannel shirt, Derek, I'm thinking. I've actually, actually, I've got some dressmaking flannels coming up in a sec. I must crack on, actually, because I've loads of lovely fabrics to show you. That's the Denimi one. And then there's a darker denim version ending 8-3. It's been the most popular of the hour, actually, this one individually. This would be good as a backing if you were making a flannel quilt. It'd be nice to have flannel on the back. But you could also do, as I say, polar fleece. And then you wouldn't need any wadding. You could put your polar fleece on the back. You can quilt it through the two layers. Technically speaking... That wouldn't be a quilt. It would be a, to um, a coverlet. It would be a coverlet because it would be two layers. Yeah, a quilt has to be three layers and a coverlet is two. So it would be a coverlet. But it'd still be very snugly. A blanket's one layer. Yeah, yeah. And then we've got our dog tooth check. I think anyway, um, ending 2-9. This is the black... This would also be really lovely to do blanket stitch applique with. So you could use something like a plain cotton or pattern cotton for the background of your applique blocks and then use all these different flannels for like blanket stitch applique. Can you imagine? Oh, it'd be lovely. Almost like a sort of Wedgwood style, you know, all different shades of blue, but maybe like floral applique, but all done in flannels with blanket stitch applique. Mm. Oh, yeah, this would be lovely for something like trousers. Mm, gorgeous. Right, that's that. I've got the same in blue, ending 5-6. Have we had a picture of that, those flannel sheets sent in yet? Is this sold out? How much have we got left? Oh, three, three units, one and a half meters left, that's all. Yeah, gorgeous. The plain cream, really nice. Don't forget as well, you can use this for things like design boards. So I'm a big fan of having, I often put my, my block to, ready to piece on a, on a cutting mat. But actually, a bit of heavy board, even cardboard, covered in some batting and then a bit of this and then just kind of lace up, stitch it across the back. Or you could even glue it, you know, um, and then have that as your design board because your fabric would stick to that as well. And you could get two design boards out of half a metre. And look, this would be the size of one. Well, I mean, you'd have to sort of turn the edges a bit, but it would make quite a decent design board, wouldn't it? So there's an idea. I know you can buy design wool and all that, but I think it might even be a little bit more expensive than buying flannel fabric. So 
Uh, ending 8-3, last one, ending 8-3. This is the sort of, almost like a window pane check. It's lovely, isn't it? Gorgeous. And again, um, although plaid is normally, well, flannel is normally quite a traditional fabric, this gives me quite a modern feel. Mm. Yeah. Nice. Right, let's do those dressmaking. Yeah. Now, I want to do the, the check effect. Look at these. Look at these. Delicious. I'm going to do these four first. Derek, I don't know if this is your style, but for me, this is just crying out to be made into beautiful shirts. That. Oh, these. Any colour. These are all Robert Kaufman. I just think they're absolutely divine. I'm going to start with this one because it's my favourite. And that ends 1-9. Now I'm going to open this out. Are these 56 wide? These are 56 wide. So they're designed with dressmaking in mind. Look, that's half a metre. And just, don't you think? It's just lovely. It's a bit brave heart, that actually, isn't it? You'll never take me alive. Look. That's lovely. That is lovely. 9.99, a half metre, but it is 56 inches wide. Beautiful, beautiful. And it's just very softly brushed. It almost feels like a quilt weight cotton, but the quality is beautiful. It is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous, very high quality. This is Robert Kaufman. So that color is blue. I've called that blue. It's, well, it's navy and jade, isn't it? It's kind of a navy and a jade. Let's do, oh, uh, it would have to be a patchwork shirt out of all of those colors, Stuart. That's Reva in Hertfordshire. Well, I was thinking the same, actually. That would be lovely too, wouldn't it? Really nice. Um, uh, Derek says, now I need a pattern for a casual shirt. I agree, would be a great shirt. Having the magenta. Derek, I'm going to grab the magenta. Because, that's a bit of all right as well, isn't it? That is a bit of all right. Oof, that is, that is lovely. I really like these. I really like these. I mean, for a decent, decent size shirt, long sleeve shirt, you'd want about two and a half meters, wouldn't you? So five units. That is gorgeous. Stunning, really classy. Nice button down collar, maybe. Navy blue buttons. Beautiful, beautiful. It would also be really lovely, maybe a pinafore dress, something like that. That would be lovely. Yeah, smash him. Crop trousers, I like it. I oh yeah, 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 I like it. In the mustard and navy. This is ending 9-2. This would be lovely for a shirt too. Is this my colorway? Would this suit me? A little bit foxy. What do you think, is that my color? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Foxy on the run, there it is. Look at that, beautiful. Oh, these are smashing. Really like these. Yeah, yeah, really like these. Um, also as well, I mean, I'm always loath to say this, but I think they would look lovely as things like placemats, napkins, tableware. If you've got a kind of rustic kitchen, <coughs> oh, excuse me, something like that. Yeah, they are kind of gorgeous agricultural kind of vibe. I was listening to Farming Today this morning as I drove in, as I often do, and they were talking about agricultural rap. There's a, there's a Somerset rapper who sings about agricultural issues. He does one rap called um, Dairy Farming Isn't As Easy As You Think. And he also loves a bit of scrumpy and western, which I didn't even know was a musical genre. But there you are. Love it. Ending 6-1. Like, I love all of these. Do you know what? I think I'll tell you what I love about these. It's the fact that they're all checked with blue. That's what I love about them. They've all got, look, that bit, that bit of blue. 
And I love blue. Just gorgeous, isn't it? That's the green, the peridot. The peridot. Nice. Stunning. Is it? Peridot is formed in the mantle of the Earth's crust alongside diamonds. You've lost me, Ben. You've lost me. And then the last one, just very classy. Very classy. Are we calling this grey? Titanium, darling. Titanium. Gorgeous. Uh, lining a picnic basket. If your picnic basket needs a little refresh. Mm. Or if you've got bags for life, there's a whole picnic bag section in that. Lunch bags, classic. Oh, how yummy. Nice to see some different dressmaking fabrics, isn't it? Now these two, I instantly want to make infinity scarves with these. This one ends six five. This is a very large scale, again, 54 inches wide. That's half, isn't that lovely? That's half a meter. The beautiful. So that, I just think, do you know what I mean? A lovely, sorry about that. <laughs> that lovely. So something like you could line that with faux fur. You could do a uh, like a um, cowl. Maybe with something like you know the the faux leather or the leather straps. A couple of those, or a couple of big chunky buttons lined with faux fur. This on the outside, quite deep. Gorgeous. Or you could do something like a poncho or a simple wrap. I mean, you can do those wraps, can't you, that are literally just a long strip that you just sew up one side or something so that they kind of wrap around you. That kind of thing, kind of poncho-esque. I think that would be lovely. Or a skirt would be really nice in that. And then the last one of the Robert Kaufman ending 05. Very classic, sort of tealy blue and black and grey. That's definitely a skirt, isn't it? Yeah, that's lovely. Yeah. And there's... Look, isn't that gorgeous? What about a coat in that? I mean, it's not, it wouldn't be as heavy as a wool coat, obviously, it's a cotton, but it would give you the look. You could, you could layer it, you could quilt it and then make it up, line it, or sometimes you just want the look of a coat without it being heavy, without it being really sort of thick. Oh, it's lovely. Hats, bucket hat, a, a Baker Boy hat would be lovely. If you've got Adam Brooks's pattern. So many lovely things you could do with these fabrics. I love them. I love them. Now, let's do the other mode. Is that the, the autumn? Yes. Right, these ones are all very limited. I'm gonna start with my favorite, which is ending 5-2. I'd really like to buy all that's left of this, but I think you might get there before me because I think this would make, oh, that's really good, 6 99 and a half meter. I think this would make the most gorgeous background for a plique. I love this herringbone. I just think it's beautiful. A Baker Boy hat would be lovely. A waistcoat would be lovely in this, wouldn't it? Gorgeous, great price as well. Uh, Vian's got in touch to say, Morning Street, how are you? Not long now till you're driving home for Christmas. 
Oh, no. I hope you're still on Santa's good boy list. Of course I am. Alison Marion's watching. Morning, Alison. How's that gorgeous little baby Ollie? I was looking at the pictures last night. Adorable. Absolutely adorable. There's the first. That is my favourite. How much have we got left of this one? Have we got enough? Oh, see, I'd buy all of that. I've got five metres up that left. I'd have it all. Right, these three. I'll do them individually, but these are lovely, aren't they? Again, so many things you could do with these colours. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, yummy. Uh, right, let's start with this one, ending 9-0. Gorgeous that, isn't it? That's called Heather Ash. It's got a little, a tiny little bit of heathery purple, a little bit of soft blue. The textures, it looks beautiful. It looks beautiful. Yeah, really good price, six ninety nine. Very, very limited though. You'll have to be quick. This is Moda Autumn Gatherings. So stunning. Oh. Oh, Molly Stewart, I think a really nice bandana or coat for the dog. Perhaps even a plush dog bed. Oh, Kelly, brilliant ideas. Yeah, love the idea of a pet bed or a, or a coat. That would be gorgeous. Yeah, great idea. Quilted diamond cross hatch. Gorgeous. Next one ending 8-0. This is a sort of lovely, rich, golden brown, isn't it? Uh, this is called Branch. Branch. Yeah, again, a waistcoat would be nice, wouldn't it? Be lovely. Or a teddy bear. Extra snuggly. This is 9.6. This is that gorgeous kind of burnt orange or rust. I could do it with a little press. <laughs> Somebody give me an iron. <laughs> it's no better on the other side. I'm trying to stretch. <laughs> Look, if, you, if we go in really tight, <laughs> that's better. Oh, Bruce, you're a genius. Thank you. <laughs> Look at that. That's lovely, though. Gorgeous. Right. That's that one, then. <laughs> lovely. Thank you. I don't know how they get creased like that, honestly. Uh, then, look at this lovely purple, ending 3-2. Uh, the web image doesn't do this justice at all. It is absolutely gorgeous. It's called uh, Spirit Mum. Spirit Mum. Oh, that's lovely. Spirit Mum. It's a gorgeous colour, isn't it? Love that soft heather. It's a heathery purple, isn't it? Oh, Cat, you are good. Cat's just gone over to iron that fabric. Oh, love Cat. That's that one. Uh, and then Spirit Mum in golden yellow. Oh, I love that colour. Three zero. It's not called Spirit Mum. This is called Spirit. <laughs> hey. Hey, guys. Hey. Hey, y'all. Oh, it's beautiful, though. What colour would you call that? Hey. It's not the colour of hay. Hay is like a greenish gold. Good hay is like a pale green. I don't... <laughs> That's cool. What colour would you call that? It's not corn. Custard powder? Cat? Egg yolk. Egg yolk. Good. Thank you for bringing a bit of culture and a bit of class. Yes. Egg yolk. It's lovely. Eggnog. Eggnog. Deputy Joan made Baileys. She made Baileys. 
her WI had a visit from a lady who did like foody Christmas gifting and did all these lovely demos of things like gingerbread and goodness knows what else. And one of the things was homemade Baileys. I know, I know. It was delicious. Right, ending 2 7. Yummy, yummy green. That's lush. Lynn says, morning all, watching from hospital again. Oh, Lynn, darling, sending you lots of love. Um, she says, hope you all have a great Christmas. You too. See you next week, Stuart. Loving the hat again. Couldn't resist. Trying to get my money's worth out of it. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh, I hope you get well soon. Hope you're out of hospital before Christmas. Although I imagine my friend Sally is a nurse and she always goes all out for her patients at Christmas to make it as lovely and fun as possible. And then the last one that I've got ends 6 9. Yep, here we go. This is like a lovely sort of cream and tan texture. Oh, is that gone? It's gone, sold out. Now I've got some baby flannel. Can I just quickly show the panel? There's a panel and there's coordinates. Here's the panel. Oh, it look lovely. It's a hot air balloon with little rabbits in it. Oh, that's very cute. That's very cute. And it's big. So you could literally just layer and quilt that and put a binding on. And there's your baby quilt all done and dusted. Oh, that's lovely. Have we got the details for that, Ben? Where those graphics at? Oh, that's really good. Fourteen ninety nine for that. And that would just be done and dusted. You could quilt around, simple shapes, wouldn't be difficult. Oh, it's lovely. Lovely. Um, and some adorable little coordinates if you wanted to make maybe a little receiving blanket or a um, little cuddle blanket or little pillows. Just very, very sweet, isn't it? Have a look on the website for that. It's all there. All 8.99 a half metre. We'll just run those through during the break. Right. I'm going for a break. <laughs> We're all going for a break. When we come back, uh, gorgeous Susie Duncan is here with her first hour with the most amazing value at Quilt Kit. I'll see you after this. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. Head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Our UK-based call centre is always on hand to assist you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Here at Sewing Street, we only charge one P&P throughout the day. You can add as many items to your basket and check out and still only be charged once. Once you've checked out the first time and want to order again, you simply add the item to the basket and click on the Combine Order button. Remember, standard P&P is £3.95. Charges may differ for outside the UK. Or upgrade to our premium option for £5.95 on certain items. Shopping made easy at Sewing Street. Here at Sewing Street, we're always looking at ways to make your shopping experience better. That's why on certain items, we have split pay. So with the split pay, depending on the price of the item, you can split the cost twice, three times or four times. So that means you pay once, then you pay monthly until it's finished. And you know what? We do not charge any interest whatsoever. Isn't that fantastic? Split pay, you say? Well, yes, please. I'm off to buy myself something fabulous. Every day, our experts will bring you a wealth of knowledge. They'll take you through the steps of making projects, and we feature fabulous tips along the way. 
Whether you're new to sewing or a seasoned pro, you're sure to learn something new. We're live every day from 8 a.m. till 1 p.m. And you can also watch back all of the demonstrations featured on the show on our YouTube channel. Did you know that we can deliver to over 20 different countries worldwide, spanning four continents from the UK to Australia? Check out our website for the list of countries and delivery costs. Sewing Street, stitching the world together. Our UK-based call centre is always on hand to assist you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Here at Sewing Street, we only charge one P&P throughout the day. You can add as many items to your basket and check out and still only be charged once. Once you've checked out the first time and want to order again, you simply add the item to the basket and click on the Combine Order button. Remember, standard P&P is £3.95. Charges may differ for outside the UK. Or upgrade to our premium option for £5.95 on certain items. Shopping made easy at Sewing Street. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. Head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope, and you're done. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Here at Sewing Street, we're always looking at ways to make your shopping experience better. That's why on certain items, we have split pay. So with the split pay, depending on the price of the item, you can split the cost twice, three times, or four times. So that means you pay once, then you pay monthly until it's finished. And you know what? We do not charge any interest whatsoever. Isn't that fantastic? Split pay, you say? Well, yes, please. I'm off to buy myself something fabulous. Shopping with Sewing Street couldn't be easier. You can shop via our website at www.sewingstreet.com where you can watch our live shows and see all the products from that day. We also have a huge amount of products on our website from your sewing room essentials to fabrics, sewing machines and much more. You can download and shop on the go with our Sewing Street app. Simply head over to your app store and search Sewing Street. Alternatively, you can contact our UK-based call centre 24 hours a day on 0800 001 4433. Shopping made easy at Sewing Street. Are you having trouble finding the ideal gift for that someone special? Then why not treat them to a Sewing Street gift card? Simply head over to the website and scroll down to the bottom of the page and click where it says Gift Cards. You can decide between posting the card or delivery by email, then decide the value that you would like to send. Whether it's for a birthday, a special occasion or just a way to say thank you, the Sewing Street gift card is the perfect answer. Hey, great to have your company here on Sewing Street. It's the 22nd it is. of December. <laughs> I'm getting so excited now. I love a bit of Christmas. I do. And uh, oh, look who's joined me. It's Mrs. Christmas herself, <laughs> Susie Duncan. Hello. Oh, swishing about. You look amazing. Thank Very you. Very festive. Well, I tried. That's a Christmas Day outfit if ever I saw one. It is, although I, it's not what I'm wearing on Christmas Day. Oh, well, I shan't ask. It looks a bit Dan Morris, that fabric, doesn't it? Yeah, I don't know. It Lovely. isn't. Lovely. It isn't. 
anyway. A brilliant new quilt pattern from Susie Duncan. You may have seen it hanging behind her. It's the pinwheel quilt. Let's have a little look. Isn't it lovely? It I love the secondary patterns yes. that get created where the blocks come together. Yeah, And if you mix and match your colours, you can create so many different designs i had great really fun clever messing about i mean designing this <laughs> <laughs> well sometimes the best patterns come from yeah. a bit of playtime don't they because panned out you the pinwheel bit sort of explodes through it it really does everything yeah. joins up and it's almost that way of where you can't see where the block begins yeah. and ends Super clever pattern, it's brand new today. It's already proving very popular. Let's start with instructions on their own because this would be great for scrap quilting, using up your stash. $9.99 for the pattern on its own. I mean, when you see the price of the kit, you might well be tempted to go for a kit, but a brilliant pattern to have in your stash anyway. Um, a, a really fantastic way to use up your scraps and also, you know, your favorite uh, fabric collection. Uh, you get the pattern for the quilt. There's also options for two different sizes of block. Am I right? Yes, because um, not everyone wants a quilt, but no. it makes a really good cushion. And I've given you two variations of the cushion. You can do a mini form of the quilt pattern, mm -hmm. but you use a much sm smaller block, obviously. Yes. Or you can just do one block. Um, which is the sample that is winging its way very soon to us. I love that. I love that. Um, and you could actually, because this is half the size of this absolutely. block, isn't it? You could mix and match the smaller units in with the bigger ones. You can if you wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. Loads yeah. of versatility in there. Yeah. Great instructions as always. You never take anything for granted, Susie. No, I don't. I. Um, that's the OCD of myself coming out. But I just like to, because it is a it is a, a pattern that a beginner could tackle. Yeah, yeah. And it's a great way of learning half square triangles and patterns that you can create with half square triangles. Yes. So that, that's really what I was thinking of when I did it. Plus the fact, I think it was a windy day. <laughs> <laughs> I like and that. And I've just driven past loads of the, um, the big... Um, electricity generating windmills, you know, the wind farms. Yes. And I just thought, you know, that would be a really good project to put, yeah. to put on. It is gorgeous. Way, so. Look how it looks as a single block made up into a cushion. How gorgeous is that? We have got these fabrics as a kit, by the way. The price is incredible. Uh, shall we have a look at some kits? Let's have a look, because the prices are amazing. And these make a full quilt. The quilt is 48 inches square. So it's a really good size. Shall we start with that one? It's so pretty. So this is some beautiful poppy cotton fabrics. These are adorable. Um, these ones, so you get, you get half a meter of this. You get half a meter of this lovely floral you get a meter of this beautiful buttery uh, mottle and then you get a meter of this gorgeous is that a liberty it is oh i say you love your liberty, liberty you? august meadow For 39 yes you heard me right <laughs> liberty 39.99 and of course you get your instructions as well that's a bit bonkers, but I love it. It is. It's a Christmas bargain. It is a Christmas bargain. It's like a Boxing Day bargain, but it's only the 22nd of December. It is. That's fab. 48 inches square, your quilt. Or you could make some different, size, you know, cushion. You could do a table runner with three yep. uh, blocks in a row, something like that. Or even two yep. blocks. Absolutely smashing. Make a so, mat for your sewing machine. Oh, that's a nice It's surprising idea. how much quite much more quiet your sewing machine becomes when it sits on a mat. Oh, for sure. So for those of you who, like me, sew at silly o'clock, a mm -hmm. um, mat for your sewing machine is the way forward. That's a really nice idea. I like that. I like that. Well, the kit will certainly make that 48-inch square quilt, so it would do that. Cushions, a few little accessories. Yep. Gorgeous. Love those fabrics. They are stunning. Plus pattern, of course. 
The price point is amazing. It is amazing. Right, beginner friendly too. Right, next up, let's do the one that Susie's made the finished sample in. Again, absolutely stunning range of fabrics here from Poppy Cotton. You've got a range of lovely kind of soft minty greens, some turquoise. You've got that beautiful mottle there and then a dark teal solid. That's beautiful. Plus your pattern, $39.99. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. It's been the most popular of the kits so far. But of course, Susie, once you start demonstrating, I know. who knows what will happen. You get your pattern as well included, of course. Now think about it, $9.99 for your pattern, £30 for three meters of fabric. So working out at just £10 a meter for your fabric kit. Absolutely amazing. You've got those lovely Insane. designer fabrics. Yeah. Insane. Fab. Yeah, wonderful. Now then, next up, let's do the one that Suze is going to be working with. This is gorgeous kind of soft, gentle, pretty colours. Yeah, this is kind of spring, summer. So you've got that gorgeous kind of peachy orange floral. You've got that wonderful warm creamy tan. You've got a pink mottle. Oh, how pretty is that? And then you've got your solid to go with. That is absolutely lovely. Again, three meters of designer cotton fabrics, plus your pattern, $39.99. That's an absolute bargain, absolute bargain. Brilliant. And then our last option, of course, we couldn't do a, a quilt kit without having blues, beautiful oh, blues. They are stunning. Yeah, the world's favorite color, of course. And these are lovely kind of soft, um, kind of grey blues and a lovely sky blue there. You've got your navy mottle. And which colour is that, Ben? It's lovely. Which one is it? Duck egg. Duck egg, yes. Duck egg, yeah, lovely. Yeah. And your pattern for £39.99. Sorry, I couldn't see. Fab. Well, shall we demo? Shall we indeed? Great. Yes. Do you need help? Well, always need help. I'll come and join you. Honest, no, I right, come and join you. I'm permanently needing help. Um, so the pattern, first thing you have to decide is whether you're going to make a cushion or a quilt, because mm -hmm. that will affect obviously how much you cut and what you cut. Yeah. Um, once you've decided what you're going to cut, then you just follow the instructions for it. Mm -hmm. How you make it up is exactly the same, okay. but you obviously have different sizes. What um, I've done is deliberately in the kit, we've got two fancy Nancy fabrics or decorative yeah. fabrics, yeah. as we like to call them, and two not plain, but um, I like to call them coordinating yeah, fabrics. Yeah, like sort of tonals. So you can ma you can mix and match within that if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. So although I've used um, the fabrics in the order I have on this, if mm. you want to swap them around, yeah. you've got scope to do that. We've yeah. got cut it tight, tight to size, cool. um, which is great because it means you've got plenty. You can personalise it then. Yeah. Um, you are going to be making a lot of half square triangles. Okay, we love so that. So if you've never done a half square triangle before, now's the time okay, <laughs> to great. do it. You're going to show us a four for one I am. offer. <laughs> because, yeah, because there are so many and you're making, you need four of every sort per block. Okay. The four in one method yep. seemed to be the easiest way to go. So I'm going to go through it from beginning to, to end okay. and show you how I join them. And the other thing that I was conscious of and the way that the design came about was matching seams. Mm. I hate seam matching. Oh, right, okay. When you've got a lot of projects to do, yeah. it's annoying not to be able to just quickly sew, 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 sew. So a lot of them just fit together nicely and right. you don't have to match up your scenes. It's only when you come to put the rows together you yeah. really have to concentrate. Okay. So we're going to go from the beginning if that's mm -hmm. all right. Yeah. So you're going to cut the relevant size squares that you, it tells you in the pattern 
and then um, you're going to match them in the pairs that it says to you in the Okay, pattern. so I can see there you've got this lovely I've got sort of peachy too. floral yeah. and then that soft pink mottle. That's a lovely combo. It does look good, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. And it was really hard to um, choose because it looks really good together with the other one yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I mean. You've got the choices there and the, the fabrics all marry so well together. Um, so I've just... One tip I will give is best press your fabric before okay. you cut. Yep. Because you are doing half square triangles and everything's on the bias, it just gives you a much better pressing result. So for anyone that doesn't end. know what is best press, so, how do you use it? Right, so best press, I have, uh, yes, I have got some. I will show you. <clears throat> best press, it's probably not the variety we've got on the show because this is the one I have in my bag, but it is a natural sizing product. Um, so it's a clear starch and it, it absorbs into the fibres, doesn't make them, you know, remember the stiff collars? Yeah, We're yeah, not going that yeah. stiff. Um, but what we are doing is supporting the fibres. Okay. So that when you're cutting them, you're getting clean cuts. Mm -hmm. When you're pressing and sewing, the fabric has less tendency to stretch ah, and move. Sounds good. So you're yep. not going to get the warp and weft threads sort of skewing. Mm -hmm. They work really well together. So it is well worth the time and effort when you're pressing your fabric to start with just to give it a spray with best so press. So you would, you would uh, yeah. best press I mean, your fabric before you cut Absolutely. it? Absolutely. I know I've cut this one, but normally I do the full half yeah. metre. But just to get so that gorgeous... You don't want masses. You're not flooding it. I know, this is the lavender one. Oh, lavender and vanilla, that's yeah, beautiful. And then beautiful. you just press it. And then you just press it on. And that means that when you cut, it gives a nice clean cut to your edge of your fabric, mm -hmm. which is fab. Making myself useful. Yeah, I like Trying to stay good. on Santa's good list, you see. Excellent. You've only got two days to go. I know, but You're I really think You're in with a chance. So. You're in with a chance. I've given up. always mess it up at the I last minute. I have so given up. Oh. Um, then once you've got your squares, you pair them and you want to pair them exactly. And I always pin yeah. because it doesn't matter how good you are at sewing, it's going to move as yeah. you sew. Um, you can clip if you prefer. I tend to pin this um, section yeah. and um, you can chain piece these if you want to. I tend to do them one at a time. You now need to stitch all the way round the edge at a quarter of an inch. So you can either choose to do your, use your quarter of an inch stitch on your machine, mm -hmm. or you can um, set it to a straight stitch and, and follow your quarter of an inch line. Okay. Okay, it's entirely up to you, but it needs to be a quarter of an inch. Okay. And test it before you start. Okay. Um, because the last thing you want to do is to find halfway through you've be actually been doing what you think is a quarter of an inch mm. and it's not. Mm. So I'm just going to sew all the way round. So literally all the way round the outside of the yeah. two squares. Yeah. And do you pivot or do you cross the seams at the corners? I've pivoted but it doesn't matter. It's whatever's easiest for you. That's why I say you can chain piece because you could have all of them in a row and just do one side of each yeah. cut, yeah. turn and keep going. It's entirely up to you which way. As long as all four sides end up with a quarter inch seam on them, you're good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can imagine Better the noise in my off. house, can't you? <laughs> The plane leaving for sewing, sewing town will be leaving in five minutes. Five minutes, yeah, exactly. Passport control order. And to give that a little press. That, uh, hang on, in a minute. Yep. Bear with me. Right, what we're going to do now is cut it into the four. Do you want me to set the seam first? Um, you can do, yeah. Why not? Why not? So then you'll need a straight edge ruler. A rotating cutting mat isn't essential, but it's helpful if you want to. Mm -hmm. um, but I find it just as easy. Now, on your Creative Grids rulers, in fact, most of your quilting rulers, there is a 45 line, which mm. is quite handy because you can place that along one edge and then you know you've got the true diagonal. Oh, OK, that's a good tip. Just in case you're slightly squiffy when you sew. I, the measurements I've given you... Don't move anything when you've done that first cut, by no. the way, because... Rotating cutting mat useful here. It is. 
but I haven't got the space to rotate. No, no, yeah. I can rotate, but not the mat. Um, you're going to do the opposite diagonal as mm -hmm. well. Sorry, cutting towards you. I promise I won't hit you. <laughs> so then you've got four half square triangles. Oh, wow. See that? There so, they are. Four for the price of one. I know. So press towards the dark side press or press open? The, can you press towards the pink? Towards side? the pink? I certainly will. I yes, certainly will. Thank you very much. Um, and you'll do that for all your pairs and then we're going to trim them down. And I've deliberately allowed um, leeway. In okay, the so you make yours slightly bigger than I you do. need them and, and that, trim them to size. And the only reason I do that is because if you're a beginner, it's quite scary to know you've got no leeway. So I like yeah. to give you a little bit of leeway and it's, I, I prefer to have a nice neat edge when I'm joining everything. Yeah. So therefore having that ability to trim down yeah. is good. So I'm gonna show you some different ways you can trim these. But before I do, I'm just gonna mention the other ruler that we've got on the show. Oh yeah, there's different ways to make half square triangles, oh, yeah. I mean, aren't there? So the way I've shown you is the rapid way if you're making lots. But um, if you have the multi-size six inch flying geese and 45 degree, 90 degree triangle ruler from Creative Grids. Which I do and I love. Yes, I use this a lot. Um, but you may not have it. But if you have got it, then what you want to do is obviously read the instructions, but follow the guides on your ruler. Mm. And you're using what I call the sailboat side. Right. Which is the single triangle, yep. not the full pyramid. Yeah. Yeah. And we, you cut it to end up with the finished size, which is written in black on the right hand side of the ruler, according to the, the pattern you're mm. following. So... For example, we'd, if we, were, we wanted a finished size of five inches, so I'd cut five and a half inch strips. So you yeah. wouldn't follow my instructions right. for cutting. Mm -hmm. You'll cut according to this, and you've got plenty of fabric to do this. And then when you've got your strip, you place the ruler on. Now, I tend to pair the strips, do yes. you? Yes, absolutely. Yeah? I mean, do you want me to demo it? Have we got time? I think we do. I think Shall we do. That would be awesome do if you it. don't mind. No, I don't. No, I love it. And I love the fact as well with this ruler where normally with half square triangles, it's weird, kind of like two and seven eighths or yeah. five and three eighths. It's just two and a half inch strip, yeah. three and a half inch strip or a two it inch is. strip. And um, so it's very easy to cut your pieces. It is. So I'm just going to cut these down. These are ones I've trimmed earlier. Mm -hmm. So... Let's cut that down to five. Not enough welly sues. There you go. So that's a five. Mm -hmm. Actually, it should have been a five and a half. You can do five. You can we'll do a five, five inch strip on there. Yeah, yeah. we'll do five. Just so with so that you ruler as well, idea. you can use your jelly roll strips, Absolutely. which are two and a half inch wide, yeah. but you can make two inch finished half square triangles, which of course, if you were using the Bigger method, you'd cut three inch squares, which of course you can't do yeah. with a jelly roll. It's very, very clever, the ruler. It's very absolutely clever. brilliant. Mm. Now my my tip when you're pairing fabrics, do you do this? Press them? Yeah. Yeah. Because then they hug each they other. They do. It's so cool. They do. We don't need masses, so just do the first bit. That's it. Cool. Do if I just iron that first bit? Yeah, that that's right? fine. We're not going to do we it go. all, are we? What I'll do is put a clip in this end and then it holds it for us, doesn't it? There you go. So we've pressed them, they're right sides together. Mm -hmm. So you take your ruler and you place it, and this is where a rotating mat does help. You place it so that your um, ruler lines up top and bottom edge on your fabric. Mm -hmm. And you have got a, a top here and that just means it's easier to join them together. Yeah, now your you dog ears are already cut off at the yeah, top, Absolutely. Because I haven't got a clean edge, I'm not going to align it up with that edge. I'm just going to make sure the top and bottom are. And then I'll cut across. And then, oops, make sure you've got nothing underneath because then uh, otherwise it won't fit. Just move that one out of the way. Uh, yeah. And then I'm going to line that cut edge up and then continue the cut up here. And then you turn it round and you carry on like that. Now, when you've got your, your triangles, 
the way you stitch them together, I've gone off piece here, never mind. There you go, can't do more because I hit the sewing machine. Is keep them like that. I just, you don't have to put a pin in, but you can if you want to. And then you do your quarter mm -hmm. inch, mm -hmm. don't you? And then yeah. it's all done for you. Yeah, no marking. No. Nope. Go straight to your sewing. Yeah. And they are really accurate. I love this ruler. Yeah. I love this ruler so much, Susie. I've actually mentioned it by name in my new book. Have you? I've never done that with a ruler ever. There you go. Ever. I've always just said, you know, a six and a half inch by 12 inch yeah. or whatever ruler. But I was so impressed with this and it's so useful. I think every quilter should have one. Absolutely. I mean, I use mine a lot yeah a huge amount yeah. yeah because you can do a very you know everything up to a six inch from one inch well from half an inch yeah which is perfect look at that as well so just to show you and just one dog ear yeah one That's dog ear to clip. and look perfect size yeah no trimming required love that even better they are good you know i know i know it seems really obvious but to make half square triangles you can just sew triangles together yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. i Brilliant. mean i save all my trimmings on my flying geese units to sew together um to make different projects with it's good to have options isn't it it is so trimming down mm -hmm. i'm using the perfect five because i need a five inch square so it seems pretty obvious to me to use a five inch ruler and yeah. I'm not faffing about. No, I agree with you. If you if you if you can get sort of a ruler for every size, it does make it very simple. Absolutely. So what I'm gonna do is trim this one down and talk you through what I'm doing as I do, and then I'll show you another method of trimming down. Now the one ruler I which is also a favourite of mine for half square triangles that I can't use for this because of the size, this size, if you're making the smaller version you can is the June Taylor half square and quarter square triangle ruler. Mm -hmm. That will only do your half inch increments. Right, okay. So it's no good for your five inch. So with this one, and with any of the creative grids, put your 45 degree along your sewn seam. So that's this measurement that's here. That one yeah. here, yeah, you've got a diagonal line. Make sure that the rest of it is within the margins of your fabric, because if it isn't, your cut's not going to happen. Yeah. Um, I also try and line up the other points so that they're roughly towards that. So I know I'm central in the block. You're gonna trim up the right side and I tend to trim across the top at the same time. If you've got a rotating cutting mat, you can turn it. Yes. But because of space, I'm not going to. But then you're gonna line up the outer edges of your ruler. Mm -hmm with those two cut lines you've just made and keep that diagonal on that sewn seam and then cut the other two as well. And then you'll get your perfect five. Gorgeous, yeah. Okay, so I'm and it's a good way on. as well to ensure that all of your units are the correct size because yeah. you, you're not just relying on sewing them to the right size, you trim them to the right yes. size. And it's nice to have a neat sewing edge, particularly if you're using a quarter inch foot mm. with a guard, mm. um, because then you've not got any snagging going on as you're so stitching sure together. Now, Steph's got in touch to say, yes. pinwheels are a gorgeous block. They're easy to do, but Steph struggles with bulky seams, particularly right. at the center yeah. where you've got eight Coming seams together. all coming together. Yeah. Any tips for reducing the bulk? So, um, Great question, Steph. One thing I do, which is what I've done with this, is press everything in the same direction because the, when you put them together, if you imagine they're, they're going to come together, they'll overlap and create a sort of wheel in themselves. Mm -hmm. um, that is one thing that I do. If you press open, yep. um, that helps as well. S pressing, when you've finished putting them together, if you do give them a bit of a spritz with best press or yes. starch savvy, yes, that's a good it tip. eases the fibres back down. Mm -hmm. And instead of ironing your fabric every time, press your fabric. Yeah. This is what because we use an iron, mm -hmm. we automatically move our arm across, don't mm -hmm. we? But with 
with quilting and particularly with half square triangles and quarter square triangles and flying geese, you actually want to press yeah. the fabric. Well, I was going to say, Susie, what do you think about using a clapper yes, when you do I use your centre press? Yeah. Use a wooden clapper if you've got one. Yeah. We've actually got, I think we've got the clapper in the next hour, haven't we? Mm. We've got it at 12 o'clock. Mm. We've got it at 12 o'clock. So it's often thought of as a dressmaking tool, but more and more quilters are getting into using clappers yeah. to keep their seams really flat. I mean, I use one a lot at home. Um, and it isn't where you give yourself a round of applause for anyone who doesn't know what we're talking about. <laughs> no, it's a wooden block that you it put is. on top of your seams. And it's, it? it's absolutely brilliant. It's, a, it's usually made of beech or birch so that it's A, heat resistant, but retains heat. So it mm. gives that fabric a few more moments of being cuddled with warmth. Yes. Ooh, ooh. To put it in, Selling it keep to me, it in Susan. position. <laughs> Um, now, Steph also goes on to ask, I think um, will there be enough fabric in this kit yes. if she's using her um, uh, Gemini builder block system, Crafter's Companion Gemini? Um, I would have thought so, because I had a fair amount left over. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah I think you'd be fine. It yeah, always comes down to how much extra you have when you're folding your fabric. Yeah, because the builder block, from what I remember, doesn't waste masses because no. you can... You can place nestle the dies. quite close, can't yeah, you? you? Can. It's usually <clears throat> millimetres, so yep. yeah, I would think you'd be okay. Sue's got in touch to also help to answer Steph's question about bulk, and she says, "Morning, all. I love Sue's demos. Always top notch." I like to reduce the bulk when I can by using the twiddle in the middle method, yeah. which is that sort of smushing Smush it. Yes. round and about. Um, yep. Eleanor Burns is a big proponent of smushing, smushing. the centre of blocks and just opening them out, yep. fanning them round. Absolutely. As much as you can. Yeah. And sometimes you have to get in there with a little sharp pair of scissors, don't you? I was going to say, some you? people unpick the stitching in the, in the seam allowance mm -hmm. to allow the fabric to just do its thing. Yep. And I, I know it sounds weird, and when I say this at home, everyone just looks at me as if, yep, she needs to go get back ready, in her everybody. box. Get ready, everybody. Yeah. Um, fabric does talk to you when you're pressing it. It tells you which way it wants oh, to no, go. Oh, no, I agree with you. It I does, agree. doesn't yeah. it? You know if you've pressed a seam the wrong way. Yeah. Because the fabric just... It, all, it almost looks at you as if to say, seriously, yeah, yeah. do yeah. you really yeah. want me to do that? Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's a bit of um, gentle handling, I think, mm. for the centres of mm. pinwheels. Mm. But I do find that pressing in the same direction is the, my best start point. Sure. Yeah. So we've made our pinwheel we units, we've made our half square triangles. We have. Are we ready to make a pinwheel? We're ready to make the entire block. Oh, amazing, let's um, do it. So I will say <laughs> it is really helpful to make sure you know which fabric is which because the orientation at yeah, this yeah. stage mm -hmm. matters. So once you've decided on your uh, layout, you're mm -hmm. then going to piece them all together. Okay. So well, I was suggesting I earlier on using the cream flannel fabric that we had in the yeah. first hour to make a design board. Yes. So I'm quite keen on those. Yeah. I, yeah, I love all things. Anything that will help your head remember stuff. Yes. So I lay it out row by row. Gotcha. Because then I know what's going on. And I'm just checking that I've got everything the right way around. I say row by row. Nice. I'm now coming to the pin, the big pinwheel bit in the middle. And that's where... It's an easy one to do because you know if you've got two fabrics the same touching each other, mm -hmm. you've done something wrong. You've done something wrong. Um, and that's why I like a pinwheel because it's a really easy one to mm. lay out. I've got far too many fabrics around here. Let's move along. <clears throat> and then that one will go that way. No, it won't. Keep going. That one, one will more. go that way. That's it. There you go. So that gives us our centre pinwheel. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to move on to these around the edge as well. So that one goes there. No, nope, that one goes there. <laughs> I am awake. That one goes that way. That one goes there. That one goes that way. 
that one goes that way. And this one goes that way. So that's how it will end up looking. Hurrah, yes, perfect. So you've got the middle one spinning out to a secondary one, spinning mm -hmm. out to a tertiary one. Yeah, fabulous. But you can mix it all around if you want it's to. It's lovely, I love that combination of colours. Really cool. And I, here at this stage, I would take a photo. Oh, absolutely. And I would look at the photo yeah. because you could look at that for 10 minutes and think, yep, everything's in the right yeah. place. And then look at a photo and think, hang on, one of my patches is the wrong way yeah. around. And what I do, surprisingly, mm. is I um, put them together and I will put a clip on the side I'm sewing. Mm -hmm. And it's usually got a number one on it because that's enough. row one. And I'll have all my row ones together, row twos, okay. row threes, row four. So I'm then chain piecing in order. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that the so side I've sewn is in that bit okay. and that bit, mm -hmm. so I know my orientation. But I always cross-reference with my mm -hmm. diagram. Mm -hmm. Every single time I pick a piece up, I will look at it and say, does that match that? Yes, yeah. it does, and then there. I have left you a space in the pattern so you can glue or staple in a swatch of your fabric. Oh, that's a good idea. So you've got that reference as to which is what fabric. Yeah. Because I get confused. Well, I'll be honest with you. I I would actually take two fabric, sew them together, put them back. Yeah. Get the next two, put them together, sew yeah. them, put them back. I, I wouldn't even attempt to chain piece a block. Because I know I wrong. would mess it yeah. up within the first 30 seconds. <laughs> and then I'm having to unpick. So it doesn't actually save. No. It wouldn't save me time. No. So, it, it, but when you've done a few... <laughs> <laughs> then it's it's helpful um what we were saying about nesting seams although these are pressed to the same side mm -hmm. they still nest really nicely mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but one tip i do have is when you start sewing either use a scrap bit of fabric as your leader fabric mm -hmm. or start on a unseamed filled edge because then your machine will start gently and ease into the bulk that Got you. heads its Got way. You. Yeah. And then That's each of these seams I then press open mm -hmm. um, because I've found that they then sit better yep. once you put your rows together. So you'd, cool. you'd sew your rows together. So I might as well Yeah, start. let's do it. And um, while you sew, I'm just going to answer a question. Yes. Um, oh, Steph says thanks for all the tips. Much That's appreciated. Right. You're welcome. Um, uh, Sewing Reno Patchwork Guy says, question, does the split payments mean I have to have a credit check? No, it does not. Um, so if you ever go for a split pay option, it might be on a quilt kit, it could be on a sewing machine, wherever we offer split pay, it is literally an option when you check out your basket. It will ask, would you like split pay? And you just tick yes or no. And, and the split pay means that you spread the cost, sometimes two, sometimes three months, sometimes four, sometimes five. And we only take the first payment when you check out, and then we send you the quilt kit, the sewing machine, whatever it is. And then the following month you pay the next instalment and so on until all of your split pays have been paid. We don't do credit checks. You don't pay a penny interest. You don't pay any more for choosing that option. It's just a way that we have, have put together to make some of those perhaps larger purchases more manageable. But thanks for the question. Indeed. Um, would you mind doing a bit of pressing? No, I don't mind at all. Open. Open. If you don't mind. Yeah, of course. I'm going to set the seam first. Yeah. I like to always finger press seams first before I go in with an iron. Yes, I tend to. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's where my magic seam wand I use as well. Yes. Good old June Taylor. I know. What would I do? What wouldn't would I do without her? Really? Is June Taylor a real person? She was. She was. She was. Unfortunately, she's no longer. Ah, with us. okay. But yeah, she was indeed, and it was because of all the quilting she did. She, you know, she came up with the products that they had. Yeah. Um, because she wanted to make her quilting journey easier, but also help others. Yeah, I love that. Um, develop. I love that. 
Because Betty Crocker's not a real person, is no, she? No, she isn't. She never was. No. She's not a real person. It was meant to be a sort of name that sounded homely. Yeah. Betty Crocker, you know, in the kitchen it kind of thing. Old, doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> and um, well, she sounds like she knows what she's doing in the kitchen. Like Mrs. Beaton. Like Mrs. Beaton. Yeah. And um, she's quite scared. And also, oh, sorry, my rubbing. Oh. Oh, it's, I think it's slipped. Beg your pardon. Sorry, everyone. Are we all right? How's that? Is that all right? Is that better? Yeah, lovely. Um, so, yeah, uh, and they used a picture. I think it might have been one of the ladies who, one of the secretaries. Oh, really? It, was, it was based on her in the company. Yeah. That's very good. It's fine <laughs> if she was actually good in the kitchen. Can you imagine? If she was like the world's worst cook. <laughs> well, you'd hope so. Were, you'd hope so. <laughs> her family were absolutely horrified. Yeah, exactly. I think I've got better things to do than that. So funny. So if I take the ones you've got, so because we've been doing it like this, I'm going to relay it out so we know we've got it the right way round. Mm. Because it'll all be a muddle. I was going to say, right. good luck finding where they go. <laughs> Fine. And Riley Blake yes. isn't a real person. It's two people, isn't it? It is a combination of the owner's names. Yes. It is. And Michael Miller isn't isn't one person. That's two people as well, isn't it? Uh, Is that yeah. Right? yeah I think Somebody so. Yeah. Mr. Michael and yeah. Mr. Miller. Yeah. Yeah. They come together. So these are my first two rows. So I can join these two in the middle here. So is Amber Makes a real person? Is there really an Amber? No. No, there isn't. Is oh. there? I don't know where it's come from, the Amber Mate. <laughs> I'm real. You're real, Susie Duncan. Yeah, I'm real. I'm a real person. <laughs> Perhaps a little. Amy. Bit. Yeah, Amy and Bex. Am I doing all right with the, yeah, with the you're presser? Yeah, not a bad okay? presser, actually. Not a bad presser. I'll take that. Yeah, look at that. I'll take that. It's almost coming together. So if I put these in order, then mm -hmm. I can match those. Let's do this one. Work out where this one goes. That's that one. And again, I 100% would have to lay out the whole block again, yeah. make sure I was on track. But that's OK, isn't it? Absolutely. You can just take oh, this as you go. I would never cut corners when I'm quilting. I mm. always, as you know, I, if there's a difficult way to do it, I'll probably find it. <laughs> but I, I'm just so uber cautious because, as you said, it's a project that you don't want to then spend the next two days unpicking. No. So get it right first time. There we go. I'll give you those if you don't mind doing the centre seam go. on those. And oh, yeah, of course. Thank you. And then I'll sew these last two together on this one and then we can join the rows. Ha! Oh, gosh, and look, we'll have made the front of a cushion. Fantastic. Or our first block. Yeah. Which is amazing. so much quicker when you have an assistant, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing I'm available for hire. What are you doing over Christmas? <laughs> I am available for hire, but you have to pay me in cake. Oh, I can do cake. That wouldn't be a problem, I would it? I can do cake. Susie's brought in a great big container filled with chocolate cupcakes for us all today. I'm assuming there are some left, Ben. Well, I need the I need the container back when I. Oh, does that mean we have so to empty it? So you have to it? eat them because I'm not taking cake home. <laughs> there we go. Thank you. <laughs> How are we doing? We so, what's your um, what's your signature Christmas make in terms of like in the kitchen? What do you is you have cake that you make or? Um, uh, well, I dish? obviously I do a Christmas cake. Yeah. Um, I mean, my absolute favourite, and this is really sad, because I, people who know me know I'm not a big meat eater. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, 
I love spiced red cabbage. Oh, absolutely I ate that love the it. other day. Yeah. Ready for Christmas Eve. Yeah, absolutely love it. So I could just have a bowl full of that. Oh, yeah. Do me fun. Delicious. Thank you very much. Because it's kind of sweet and sour and spicy and absolutely. savoury. War you know, heartwarming. I just love it. Mm. So, yeah, that would... If I didn't have that on my plate at Christmas, I'd be very sad. Agreed. Um, I'm not bothered about the pudding side of life. Right. Um, but yeah, so no Christmas pudding with brandy sauce for you? Well, I'll have the Christmas pudding bit, but not bothered about the sauce. But, okay. Um, yeah. I'm well, my father-in-law always boring. says he likes a small <laughs> portion of Christmas pudding and a large portion, portion of, of brandy sauce. Yeah. My... <laughs> Uh, we, when we used to make the brandy butter when we were little, mm -hmm. my dad um, had a decanter of has a decanter of brandy. And yeah. He used to like watch how the brandy level went down, because we used to get quite heavy-handed in the brandy yes. butter. Yes. In fact, you probably half didn't half, isn't it? want to set light to the pudding because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was incredibly intense. So. All I've done is join the rows together mm -hmm. um, after that. I'm just checking I've got that the right way up. I have. So I flip them so that they're right sides together. And then I don't start with an end. I start with the seams. Mm -hmm. So I'll just make sure that those two seams are nestling. And I hold them with a clip, but a pin would work. You could put a pin through, mm. which is where the June Taylor boards are brilliant because you can put your pin through the seams mm -hmm. to line them up, mm. to hold them. Now, Steph was just asking about which yes. side do you sew with? You know, sometimes, say, for example, with a flying geese unit, yeah. where you've got the two seam intersections. Yeah. Some people like to sew with that on the top yeah. so they can see where they intersect. Yeah. Some people will have perhaps a plain fabric on top so the, the piecing lines are underneath and you can't see them. No. Which is your... My preference is to have the busy side up. So the side with the most seams mm -hmm. is upwards because then I can keep those the pressing line in line yeah so if keep I've, them under control so they don't flip absolutely yes that's my preference mm. but it doesn't always happen because usually i'm working at super speed so it's mm. literally zoom 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 rather mm. than concentrate this is this is my I, what i call my leisure sewing I when i come say, here this is a nice slow pace <laughs> it for you. is yeah i i know certainly when i started going to classes i was encouraged to have, like if it, for example, the flying geese, yes. where you've got those two seams that kind of crossed over, yes. have that on top, yeah. so that you could see exactly where what to sew to on. preserve yeah. your point. The only problem I have with that, and I sort of noticed it at the time, but didn't really know what to do about it, was that often that, that point was not at a quarter of an inch, because my seam allowance wasn't terribly accurate at the yeah. time and I was a bit wobbly. So what I used to do, because I could see oh, where I had to go. did you veer go, into said, it? And I'd veer in. And of course, that's not actually very good practice at all. And you wouldn't do that if you were sewing from the other side. So no. I wouldn't encourage people to do that. No. It, and I always, I mean, I know we'd all love to have perfect points on absolutely everything because quilting is in math. It's an exercise in maths, basically, isn't mm -hmm. it? So and it is National Mathematics Day. Is it? Yes, it is. Oh, awesome. Um, it's National Mathematics Day today and also National Cookie Exchange Day. So if anybody wants to exchange some oh, cookies with me... Oh, I should have made cookies with instead me. of chocolate cake, then. No, you're good with chocolate well, cake. Well, I am making fine. cookies this afternoon. Does that count? Yeah. Making. I think in America there's quite a tradition of that like, you make one style of cookie and then you meet with right. friends or neighbours and everyone swaps like a dozen That's of each. That's really cool. So you've got loads of different kinds of cookies for over Christmas. I do like that idea. I quite like that idea. I do like that idea. But, right, yeah. so we've got our pears. And I've managed to keep it in the right order. Phew, that's amazing. It is quite incredible. So all I've got to do is join that together and okay. we have a block done. I love the idea of exchanging things like that. Um, yeah. I used to do that with colleagues. We used to bake. Once a month, we'd bring in a different cake or something. Right. But we'd swap the recipe and every recipe you swapped, you paid a certain amount into a charity box. Right. So it was a... It was a 
baking a cake and bake recipe swap but raise money for a charity oh. and we oh, it was just brilliant i got so many different recipes from it but it was great fun as well because everybody did something different yeah that's lovely i like that I, um, Deputy Joan is very keen on cooking, yes. baking and things like that. And uh, it's lovely because she'll often give me the recipe and it's something perhaps that I wouldn't necessarily try because yeah. I don't know, I'm a bit sort of, not exactly in a rut with things, but I've got my recipes now yeah. at my age. I've kind of got the recipes that I know in my head and I do. Yeah. And I tend to turn to those all the time, it's quite nice. She's very experimental. Yeah, I am. Mm. I've got hundreds of cook well not hundreds but a, a lot of cookery books oh, so too. every week i pick up a new one yeah and a meal plan from that and then i write notes as i cook oh, on post-its mm -hmm. with the date so this is how sad my life is um, oh, no, no, no. so that i know what tweaks i've made and what i would do next time but yeah i love experimenting but yeah it's good fun. That's there a you nice, go. nice comments, by the way. Catherine and Jane both say lovely Christmas jumper. It is. I love that Christmas like jumper. It's fun, isn't it? It is. And Sue says, you might like my points mantra. Oh. Okay, this is one to write down. If your points meet, have a sweet. <laughs> if they don't, have two. Excellent. Love it. I love it, it Sue. It does. But <laughs> what you have it. to remember with quilts and cushions they get thrown about. No one sits there with a set square <laughs> working out whether it's all pinpoint accurate, do they? That's why you've never asked me to your house, Susie. Because <laughs> I always, everywhere I travel, I take a set, set square. square. Of course you I do. do. Of course you do. So don't get hung up about it. No. If you're new to quilting, do not get hung up about the points. Just enjoy the process mm, and the finished result. So there you go, another block. And it looks really cool in those. It colours. does, it looks fab. Yeah. That's really lovely. That's like um, rhubarb and custard. Yeah, that or um, I was going to say strawberries and cream in this. Yes. Thing. Yeah. Yes. It's lovely. It's definitely giving me rhubarb and custard. Excellent. I love rhubarb and the custard. The sweets. Oof. Oh, in a bowl. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely. Why do we always talk about food? I don't know. <laughs> I do because I'm a little greedy bit. little so and so. <laughs> I'm trying to empty my free. I had to. We had to have a freezer cull so I could get the wrong the with turkey that. crap yes. into our tiny little freezer. Yes. So we had some very obscure. I'm not sure what's in this bag. Oh, did you? But it looks as if it might be. Yeah. Oh. No surprises. So it was no. all right. We we got away with there it. There we go. Pork and rhubarb surprise. Yeah. We're <laughs> Yum. Haven't yet had to feed that. <laughs> Yummy. Excellent. Oh, easy peasy. It is. Lovely, easy, and a nice big block as well. Yes. So that's going to come together really quickly. It does, yeah. And then you fill between, because uh, you'll make five. Yeah. Uh, no, you don't. You make four, and this middle double row brings that fifth one together. Yeah, I was going to say, there's overlap, isn't there? there is. It's not five blocks no. made separately and joined together. Ever so clever, Susie. Thank you. Very clever. Must have been awake that day. <laughs> Must have been. An extra cup of coffee. Do it more often. It's lovely. It's lovely. Um, oh, Susan says, good morning from Italy. Oh, lovely. Buongiorno, come stai? Yeah. Oh, that's the only Italian I know. Is well, it? I know a little Buon bit more. Buon Nat Natale. Buon Natale. Yeah. So that's Merry Christmas. In Italy. Buon Natale. Yeah. That's lovely. Thank you, Dean Martin, for that one. Um, <laughs> no, you used to know a lot more. Did you? No, Italian is something that's on my list to learn. Mm, mm. It's the ne no, Spanish is my next language, mm. and then I want to do Italian. Oh, it's a beautiful language. Yeah. Love it. Love Italian. Um, right, that's gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you very um, much. I should recap some bundles. Let's do the blue. Yeah, the blue. This this blue one. The blue, blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, right. Yeah. So let me show you. So you get your pattern. You're all important. Pinwheel, quilt or cushion pattern. And remember, you get the block in two different sizes as well. So there's loads of value. So you get your quilt pattern and then you get three metres of fabric. You get these half metres of poppy cotton and then you get uh, one metre piece 
of the navy blue mottle and a one meter piece of duck egg blue. Isn't that pretty? Love poppy cotton fabrics. They are just delightful designs. Plus the pattern, of course. Great value, because if you think 9 99 that means you're paying 30 pounds for three meters of fabric. Where are you gonna get beautiful quilt weight cotton for 10 pounds a meter? Here, Here. Sewing Street. Absolutely. Clearly. Right, that's that one. There's the teal, the greens, the original, also been really popular. Well done if you've got yours. This was the second most popular uh, colorway this hour, yes. So you've got that gorgeous kind of fresh, minty green. You've got that pretty turquoise and yellow floral. You've got the teal mottle, and then you've got that gorgeous, really deep teal solid as well. So three meters of fabric, fabric plus pattern, 39.99. Very nice. And again, I love Susie, how you've picked fabrics, which there's pattern in there, but you're still getting that lovely definition of the pattern. Yes. Because you need yeah. enough contrast, don't you? You do, yeah. And that's why I wanted to give you the choice with your backgrounds, because if you wanted the centre pinwheel to really stand out, then you could swap it in for the darker fabric yes. as well. Yes, yes, you can mix and match a bit. Right, let's do the pink version this time. Rhubarb and custard, as we have renamed it. We have. Um, so you get a metre of that gorgeous soft rose pink, a metre of the mottled pink, and then half a metre of this beautiful soft yellow, and then half a metre of this gorgeous soft sort of apricot. Yes, tone. yeah. Lovely. Yeah. Apricot, apricot. <laughs> and it comes Lovely. together really well. Yeah, 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 it really does, Love it's it. gorgeous. And then, I don't know, it might, this might be my favourite. Now I like lots of colour and all that, but I just think, this it has it. This has just jumped to the second most the popular. Spring, I think that's a beautiful it's, it's combination. Lovely. And also, I'm I thinking you Easter. Get some liberty. I know. <laughs> you get some liberty. I was thinking Easter mm. for that. Well, also in this colourway, this would be a lovely baby quilt. It would. Be Love, really well, in fact, the blue, any of the colours actually, it would be really nice for a baby yeah, quilt. Really so this version. Put some of that flannel on the back you had in oh, the first hour. Yeah, you could use the cream flannel. That would be amazing. Lovely. So you get your half metre of the poppy cotton. You get your half metre in the floral. You get your metre in the mottle. And then you get a metre in the Liberty. Love that. Brilliant. The and there's enough in. there for your binding. So oh, it is just the wadding and, and backing that you've got to add. Ace. Ace. Fantastic value, Susie. Really, really good value. Yes. And a very versatile pattern. Because, you know, those four blocks plus the, the uh, kind of sashing creates that gorgeous 48-inch square lap quilt or throw quilt. Yep. You can do your cushion, you could do a runner, you could easily add in more fabric and do a bigger quilt. Well, actually, was, if you didn't want to cushion mm -hmm. that size, I would turn it into a tote bag. Ooh. Instead of doing an envelope back, yeah, lovely. I would put my borders on the, this size block mm -hmm. and then do use the fabric, spare fabric, to make just a plain side or another block. Mm. And then I'd have a tote bag. Yeah, that'd be really nice. That'd be Very really nice. fancy. Because you've added a border on this, haven't you? Yes. Border. So I've added, for the cushions, I add a border mm -hmm. to each block. Mm -hmm. But for the main quilt, you're going to sew all the blocks together and then add your borders. Gotcha. Mm. Smashing. Really love it. And gorgeous secondary patterns as well that appear as you start joining the blocks together. Brilliant. Brilliant stuff. Now, we've also got pattern on its own, if you would like the pattern on its own. Again, nice and easy to figure out the maths because you need two half metres of patterned fabric and then two one metre pieces of like, you know, a mottle Whichever. or yeah. a plain. Yeah, I would I would introduce a form of plain slash mixer yeah. rather than have four decorative mm -hmm. because your eyes won't see the patterns. No, you need You that need definition. it breaking up, yeah. Fab. It Fab. Amazing Gorgeous. monochrome, actually. So there it is. Uh, don't forget, if you need wadding, have a look on the website. If you want some best press, have a look on the website. Susie and I both love it. Absolutely I, I love more. it. Right, we're going to pop for a little break now. And when we come back, rulers. Rulers, <laughs> rulers, rulers. Don't My miss it. See you after this. Hour. 
Every day, our experts will bring you a wealth of knowledge. They'll take you through the steps of making projects, and we feature fabulous tips along the way. Whether you're new to sewing or a seasoned pro, you're sure to learn something new. We're live every day from 8am till 1pm, and you can also watch back all of the demonstrations featured on the show on our YouTube channel. Did you know that we can deliver to over 20 different countries worldwide, spanning four continents from the UK to Australia? Check out our website for the list of countries and delivery costs. Sewing Street, stitching the world together. Our UK-based call centre is always on hand to assist you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Here at Sewing Street, we only charge one P&P throughout the day. You can add as many items to your basket and check out and still only be charged once. Once you've checked out the first time and want to order again, you simply add the item to the basket and click on the Combine Order button. Remember, standard P&P is £3.95. Charges may differ for outside the UK. Or upgrade to our premium option for £5.95 on certain items. Shopping made easy at Sewing Street. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. Head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope, and you're done. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Here at Sewing Street, we're always looking at ways to make your shopping experience better. That's why on certain items, we have split pay. So with the split pay, depending on the price of the item, you can split the cost twice, three times, or four times. So that means you pay once, then you pay monthly until it's finished. And you know what? We do not charge any interest whatsoever. Isn't that fantastic? Split pay, you say? Well, yes, please. I'm off to buy myself something fabulous. Shopping with Sewing Street couldn't be easier. You can shop via our website at www.sewingstreet.com where you can watch our live shows and see all the products from that day. We also have a huge amount of products on our website from your sewing room essentials to fabrics, sewing machines and much more. You can download and shop on the go with our Sewing Street app. Simply head over to your app store and search Sewing Street. Alternatively, you can contact our UK-based call centre 24 hours a day on 0800 001 4433. Shopping made easy at Sewing Street. Are you having trouble finding the ideal gift for that someone special? Then why not treat them to a Sewing Street gift card? Simply head over to the website and scroll down to the bottom of the page and click where it says Gift Cards. You can decide between posting the card or delivery by email, then decide the value that you would like to send. Whether it's for a birthday, a special occasion or just a way to say thank you, the Sewing Street gift card is the perfect answer. Here at Sewing Street, we only charge one P&P throughout the day. You can add as many items to your basket and check out and still only be charged once. Once you've checked out the first time and want to order again, you simply add the item to the basket and click on the Combine Order button. Remember, standard P&P is £3.95. Charges may differ for outside the UK. Or upgrade to our premium option for £5.95 on certain items. Shopping made easy at Sewing Street. 
Hello, welcome. Uh, I'm Stuart Hillard, this is Sewing Street, and this hour is all about rulers. Um, now I've got loads of lovely rulers, um, quite a lot of them from Creative Grids who we absolutely love. I've got some easy quilting rulers as well, which are also fantastic, actually. Um, a real range, so I'm looking forward to this hour. Um, bit of demo as well. Uh, where shall we start? I've got the 45, I've got, I have, I've got the double strip. 45 degree ruler. Yeah, let's do this. Now, Susie's doing a little bit of sewing for me just to get me started. Um, so let me show you the ruler to start with. Um, this might be, um, so what it is, these are absolutely brilliant. Okay, they're from Creative Grids and they're a bit of a combination because you've actually got a two and a half inch strip ruler and quarter square triangle ruler all included in the same thing. So I'll show you what I mean. So this side of the ruler down here is a two and a half inch strip ruler. So look, I've got my yardage here that I'm gonna lay down on their mat, on the mat. I'm gonna line up a fold here at the top and then I'm gonna fold my fabric up so that the bottom fold is also on a line on the mat. So it is worth just spending a moment or two getting this nice and neat and nice and accurate. Okay, that is now done. So now what I can do is I can use this ruler and it has those non-slip grippers. All right, and then I can cut. Oh, a left-handed rotary cutter, that's better. Right. Oh, is it any better? Let's see, there we go, that's better. Right, so I've got my side uh, squared up. I'm gonna turn that around, flip the ruler around, and then I'm gonna line it up. And so here I can cut my two and a half inch strips. So I love that about it because I've actually got, you know, sort of du a dual purpose ruler. This rotary cutter is awful. <laughs> Don't worry, Susie. It's probably been used on paper. Let me just cut that again. Okay, there we go. That's better. Right, so I can cut two and a half inch strips using my ruler. So that's an, a real boon to have a small two and a half inch strip ruler, but it also cuts half square triangles. Now, for example, if I was to use four and a half inch wide strips of fabric, um, I could actually cut out whole half square triangles. But the real idea with this is that you cut a bunch of two and a half inch strips from, maybe you could get jelly roll strips, you could get yardage, something like that. Um, and then you cut out double uh, half square triangles. Now, Kat, would you mind just passing me that one that's been pieced, please? Thanks ever so much. I think I'll just need that actually, Susie. Yeah, thank you. Brill, thank you. Right, so what you do, so we've got this, Susie very kindly has sewn these together for me and press the seam one way. So then what I'm going to do, let's lay my ruler out. I'm gonna lay the, um, Lay the ruler on top. Yeah, sure. Your seam allowance there's a bit generous. <laughs> oh yeah, it is. Make sure, I'm just gonna show you, not to, not to criticize, but just to show you that if you do, your seam allowance, if your seam allowance is a little bit on the generous side, it may not fit exactly under the ruler. I think this ruler, it says a stamp. Yeah. No, don't worry, it's fine, it's fine. Yep, so what you do then is you pop your ruler on top, okay, and then you cut. All right, so you're gonna cut along here and along here and along here. And I like to turn the board rather than trying to turn anything else. If you've got a rotating cut cutting mat, uh, that's perfect for, for this job. 
And then you're going to cut on your uprights as well. Okay. And what you end up with then is a load of pieced half square triangles. So I'll cut a few more while I'm here. Now, before we do that, look at this. Should be $29.99, but look what we're gonna do. Hello, 10 pounds off. We don't normally do that. I mean, yesterday it was rather lovely. We took 10 pound off a couple of rulers then and they sold out very, very quickly. So if you're thinking, uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say no, I wouldn't say no, uh, now's a great time. Grab yourself one of these brilliant rulers. So I'm gonna do the last few. So we'll do the whole strip and then I'll show you how they go together. And do you see these little sort of keyholes? That's so that your rotary cutter can go right off the edge so you get a perfect clean cut. There we go. Right, so look at that. I've got all of these pieced half square triangles. Let's put them together. Let's put them together. Now there are various suggestions for blocks that you can make. But what you want to do, let me just see. Uh, wait a minute. Is that, so you've got the dark and the light and the light and the dark. So those are both the same. Just want to make sure I get it round the right. No, those are two the same. Stuart. Not like that. I know we've done it right. Yeah, yeah. For a scrappy look, cut and sew different fabrics. So there's my dark and my light. And then I want Oh, work this out. <laughs> Is it like that? <laughs> Come and help me, Susie. <laughs> look at something, it doesn't... I know, that's what it is. Yeah. I'm doing this. Right. Can I do it with that? Or do I need a different strip set? You should be able to do it with that, because if you do, that's that. And then you want a long, uh, it would be the reverse. You should, you'll need one. Oh, the other I've way. got a second strip set, haven't I? Yes. I've got a, a second you strip set. It the other way around, don't you? Mm -hmm. Because that way, is that what it is? That's my second strip set. Oh, just pop your mic on, Susie. Oh, No, that's like, for that one. Oh, to do that that's one. for that one. Yeah, but that's how they get this effect. Mm. I think. I don't know. You see, I've read um, half the instructions. Let's say, I think you're... So you're going to do... Yeah, so when you do this bit to mm -hmm. make your quarters, yep. you need to sew the strips together. Got you. So you do two yeah. strip sets and then sew them together. Sew them together. This one gives you the one in between. Ah, okay. Yeah. Anyway, let me just show you where I was sort of heading towards. So you've got your, your strip set like that. So actually what you could do, Susie, would you just cut me a four and a half inch wide strip of fabric, yeah. please? Doesn't matter which. Well, just not one of either of these. Okay. Do a little bit of collaboration. Do you want plain or pearl? Uh, the plain one, I think. Yeah. Yeah, the plain one. So what we'll do there, we'll use a plain fabric, cut a four and a half inch strip, and then we'll cut. Well, I'm experimenting now, we're experimenting. And this is what you do. There are DVDs, you know, there are videos for all of these. And if you scan, 
There's a QR code on the instructions usually, or you can go onto the um, YouTube channel. And um, if you go on the YouTube channel, you'll be able to watch a video on how to use the ruler. So what I'm thinking here, Susie, is that yeah. gets sewn yeah. to that. Do you want me to go and do that? So we've got a plane and a stripe. So what I'm going to ask Susie to do now is to sew down both sides. <laughs> is that going to work? We'll try it. We're going to try it. We'll see. Everything worth a try once. Isn't I that think the phrase? So. I think so. Definitely. What's the worst that can happen? We shall see. Right, while Susan's doing that, let's just have a look at a couple of other rulers while we're here. Yep, let's do another price crash. So this is the scallop or scallop template. So this is for creating wavy or scalloped borders on quilts. So you sew on a wide border, well, anything from two inch to 12 inch wide border. Um, and then you can use this template to create a scalloped edge and it will fit perfectly on anything from a two inch to a 12 inch border. Should be 29.99. Watch this, 19.99 for that, fab. And scallop borders look great on quilts. Really nice. And of course, these are all meant for rotary cutting. So you don't have to start marking it and then cutting with a pair of scissors. You can literally just use your rotary cutter. So yeah, creative grids. It's covered with those non-slip dots so that it won't move on your fabric and give you those sort of inaccurate cuts. We don't normally crash creative grids. Uh, they're just the last of stock that we have got from Black Friday and we're doing a cheeky price crash on some of these rulers today. So take advantage uh, while you can. Ah. Ben was just explaining the reason why we've got a few of these left is because on Black Friday the website crashed and it meant that it was very difficult to shop. You may remember it. Um, otherwise, we would have completely sold out on the day. Right. No idea whether this is going to work or not, Susie, but I'm going to thank you ever so much. We'll cut one and we'll see what happens. And if it doesn't work, we'll blame chalk me. it up to experience. Yes, blame me. Stop it. <laughs> we'll see, we have to undo the top seam and then if I yeah, do so I should have done two cuts really there but anyway so there's that one and then if I unpick that and then you can sew those two together yeah. so that is one of their serving suggestions so you would then sew those together yeah how cool is that Love that. And you can make your strip pieces, like lots of strips if you want. That would be a like really nice idea. Strip, so you'd get a really multi. Yeah. But I love the fact that it's got this notch in the ruler. So yes. your ruler will, your rotary cutter will go all the way down yeah. into the fabric. It's really clever, isn't it? Yeah. Really clever. Oh, thanks ever Am so I much, Susie. Now, sir? You're dismissed now. Go and have yourself a nice cup of tea. Thank you ever so much. <laughs> oh, what would I do without Susie? $19.99 for that. Should have been $29.99. Grab a bargain. I'm sure the video online is a lot better than me. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I've never seen that before. And and I think like for those twisted pinwheels. I would probably use a solid fabric. So the other thing that I could have done is just used a four and a half inch strip plus that ruler to cut some plain triangles and then I could have sewn them together to create my, my double pinwheel. So lots and lots of different ways you can use that ruler. That's fun, I like that. Right, now next up, yeah, let's do the 
Is this another price crash? Yes, right. This is the Quick Trim and Circle Ruler XL from Creative Grids. Now, just to let you know, I've only got 17 of these rulers left. So we're gonna drop the price straight away. It should be 26.99. We're dropping the price to 16.99. Again, you're saving 10 pounds. Now, let me just tell you what this is to do. This is designed to cut any 45 degree angle. So if you like to do things like um, Bethlehem stars, something like that, a lone star quilt, it would be ideal. Um, it's also just a really great uh, four and a half inch wide strip ruler. But then also it's got little holes drilled all the way through the ruler and there are pivot points down here. So what you do is you put the, a pencil or a pen through there and a pin through there and you can draw circles. So this could be for things like quilting. So if, I use Baptist fan a lot for quilting, which has arcs joining up in fan shape. You could use this to mark quilting. You could also use this to mark circles on fabric for things like applique or for piecing as well. Um, lots of ideas that you could do with this. Um, so that's a super ruler and what a brilliant price, $16.99. Now again, do you see here, you've got the QR code. If you scan that with your smartphone, it'll take you straight through to a video to see exactly how to use the ruler and some creative ideas. Fabulous. <coughs> now we have more in baskets than we have available. I think this will sell out today. So if you want this, do check out your basket, won't you? Yeah, no, if we ever get this again, it won't be crashed. I think this is your opportunity to get it at a crashed price. Right, what else can we crash? Is that this one here? Oh, I know the one you mean. I know the one you mean. This one here. So we had this one yesterday and I'll show you how to use it. Half the stock sold out yesterday actually. So We've got less than 50 of these left. Um, now I'm just gonna use, I know this is a pieced strip, so it's joined top and bottom, but um, I'll take those, I'll take that line of stitching out. But effectively what you do is you cut strips of fabric at either whole inches or half inches, and then you just use, oops, this is a, this is an old board. This isn't a nice board. I need a different cutting mat, please. I can't cut on this. It's, if, can I just have a normal? I'll do that in a second. There we go. And if I just remove this seam allowance to show you. So you can join your fabrics together first of all and then when you open them out you'll actually have a pieced square. Thanks Kat, thank you. Um, or if you use a single layer of fabric what it will do is it will cut out, it will cut out uh, quarter square triangles. Let me just open that seam up a little bit so I can cut single layer. So for example, you might start with a joined, couple of joined strips of fabric, and then you can simply go along that strip and cut out your quarter square triangles, and then piece four of those together to create hourglass units. You can also do that, of course, with a single strip of fabric. like so. So again, you could start piecing these together. So you could have a combination of strip piece 
and plain fabrics that you join together. I'll actually just cut out two more to show you how that would look going together. Obviously, forgive the slightly raggy edges. I'm just pulling apart these fabrics to just to give you an idea of what you might do with this ruler. Yeah, it's kind of quilting in the rough. Let me just cut that and then I'm going to trim down the other side as well, just so it's a little bit neater. But um, this will actually cut out quarter square triangles, anything from one inch through to eight inches um, and lots and lots of increments in between. So here's the idea that you could combine strip pieced and plain fabrics to create these hourglass units. Really fun. Uh, great price as well. We've crashed the price, should be $23.99. You're paying $13.99. And it's a big ruler. Uh, Maxine from South Yorkshire says, just ordered the 45 degree strip ruler. Uh, what a fabulous idea. I'm a beginner quilter. Thank you so much, Maxine from Barnsley. You are welcome. You are welcome. Don't forget, Maxine, have a look on the Creative Grids YouTube channel as well, because they have videos for all of their rulers. You get a really nice sort of in-depth look at every single one of the rulers, full how-tos and different sort of creative ideas. Also do Pinterest searches for the different rulers or for, you know, the suggested quilts. Because again, you see how other people use the rulers, different colours, different fabrics they've used. And it's a great source of ideas. Hope that helps. All right. Uh, now, I don't think I can demo any more of these, but I've got the log cabin. I've got the log cabin trim tool. Okay. So this is the Log Cabin Trim Tool 2. Um, log Cabin Quilts are an absolute classic, aren't they? Uh, sort of varieties, different variations of Log Cabin. You've got the traditional Log Cabin, which is typically half dark and half light. Then you've got what's called Courthouse Steps. So instead of half and half, it's actually broken down into quarters. So you have two opposite sides that are dark, and two opposite sides that are light. And then the third option is the half log cabin, which actually builds up the sides of the log cabin. And rather than having a, a square in the center, that square is actually offset into one of the corners. So you've got a variety of different options. You can make all of these using your Creative Grids trim tool. So, so what you do, you have all full cutting instructions and um, you cut your center square and then you have strips. You cut strips of fabric um, and they, you know, for example, they say cut the strips at least two and a quarter inches wide. So you could just use jelly roll strips, which are two and a half. They can be bigger than two and a quarter, but they can't be smaller. And then your center square, you need to cut at three and a half inches exactly. And basically what you do is you start with your center square, you sew a strip on, lay the ruler on top and line up your center square with this center and then you trim the side. Then you add your next side, line it up and trim. So you add your sides and then you trim each time using these squares to help you line everything up. Uh, and it creates a really accurate log cabin block, whether you're going for the traditional, the courthouse steps or the half log cabin, um, you, get, you get an accurate block every single time. Yeah, it's a really clever tool actually. Um, and these blocks, you can do six inch log cabin and you can also do 12 inch log cabin. So there's a lot of versatility there in one, in one, um, one ruler. So that's your log cabin trim tool two. Let's 
let's find it. Half rectangle trim tool. Oh, yes. These are fantastic. Yeah, these are terrific. Did I? No. Oh. Right, this is the triangle trim tool. Let's go in and have a look. So let, let me show you first of all what it does. So the idea is that these are half rectangle triangles. So we're very familiar with half square triangles, but the challenge with half rectangle triangles is that you can't just put two rectangles together sew them on the diagonal or either side of a, a line and cut them apart because you don't end up with these rectangles. You end up with like a kite shape, a weird kite shape. Um, so actually, in order to sew two triangles together, you actually offset them like this and you sew them together. Now, that's fine. That's easy enough. But what you then need to be able to do is to trim them to a perfect size and that's when your trim tool comes into its own so have a look at that can you see so you've got for your left slanting half rectangle triangle and for your right slanting obviously with a half square triangle the slant just goes diagonally from from corner to corner of a square so it doesn't matter there isn't there's no such thing as a left or a right slanting half square triangle, but with a rectangle, the slant is very obviously one way or the other. And you usually make these in pairs. Um, so you've got one half is for trimming your left slant and the other for your right slant. And you can make everything from a one by two, a one and a half by three, a two by four, a two and a half by five, three by six, three and a half by seven, or four by eight which is going to fit a whole host of different quilt patterns. And of course, as well, do you see, you've got all of these non-slip, rather than spots, they're actually lines all over that ruler, so it never slips and slides when you're working with it. Very good, yeah. Yeah, yeah, things like this, I'm not, I'm not particularly a gadgety person, um, but something like this is a real boon um, for quilters because these are they're quite awkward units to make. I mean, they're brilliant in quilts. They add such a lot of versatility to your quilt blocks, but they are quite difficult to piece without a ruler like this. So yeah, very good. Which ruler do you mean? Ruler number two, Beverly. Beverly's messaged in. Beverly, give us the name of the ruler or give us an idea of what it does and we'll show it you without the pink mat underneath. Were you struggling to see what it did? Yeah. Okay, I'll move that out of the way in preparation. We'll just wait for your message, Beverly. Right. Yeah, let's do some easy quilting rulers. We'll start with Dresden. Now I've got this ruler. It's absolutely brilliant. It's a really good ruler. The price is fantastic, $8.99. And, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, we've got a great crash. Now, before you, oh, go on then. No, go on, it's fine. £4.49, oh my goodness, wow, okay. Right, so what you wanna do is you're gonna cut a strip of fabric. Anything from one inch up to eight inches, okay. So if I, let me see, I've got a two and a half inch strip here. Let me just grab this. Right. So with your, with your two and a half inch strip, so what you're gonna do, do you see you've got the two and a half inch mark so you're gonna lay that down on there and you're going to trim. Okay, and it creates like a little wedge shape. And then all you've gotta do is flip your ruler up and down 
and cut. And obviously you can cut multiple layers. I would probably cut up to four layers of fabric at a time. I probably wouldn't go more than that. Okay. But this is going to do loads and loads of different sizes. So you just keep cutting lots of these little wedge shapes. Can I nip over to the other side? Will you come with me? Can we nip over? I'm just going to sew. Brilliant. Right. So I want a quarter of an inch seam allowance, which I don't know Susie's machine. So I'm going to here. Wait a minute. Press a foot down. Uh, press a foot down. There we go. Right. So you sew a quarter of an inch. So you fold right sides together. This is the thick end of the wedge. I know we're used to the thin edge. And you're going to sew across it. Obviously, I'm slightly guesstimating the quarter inch seam just so I can show you how this ruler works. But you can chain piece these. So you just keep going. Right, so I've sewn four, which I think is enough. Right, let's go back the other side. <laughs> right. So then grab some scissors and snip those apart. Okay, right. So what you're going to do next, once you've done that, is this centre bit where you've got, here's the fold right here. Okay, this little corner here, I'm just going to clip down slightly. So I'm just trimming off a little bit of the bulk just at that fold. Do you see? There we go. And then I'm going to turn these through to the right side. Oops, that's not very good. Turn it through to the right side. Now I've got a little point turner here. So I'm going to use this, or you could use something like a little um, chopstick. Or you could, if you were very careful, maybe use something like a, a knitting needle that didn't have too pointy an end. And I'm just turning the tip through and pushing up the point, okay? You see like that? And then center the seam with that center fold. And you want to just crease. Now you can iron these if you're near an iron. I'm not, so I'm just gonna finger press it so I can show you. And these create the blades of a Dresden plate. So then what you'll do, and usually you would use multiple different fabrics. It's really nice to do a, a scrappy version. And you would then sew these together. So you would place them right sides together and then sew. Now I like to sew from the short end, from the unfolded end, up to the point. And what I'll do is I'll sew up to the point and then back a little way. Um, so you don't end up with your thread tail right here because once those are sewn together you're going to create either a quarter circle or a half or a three quarters or a full circle and then the outside edge you'll applique down onto a background fabric. So for example like this you would sew these down onto that background fabric. <clears throat> now that does leave the center with a raw edge. So typically what you would do is you would applique a circle over the top of that. And there are various different ways you can create your circle, fusible applique, turned edge applique, and that covers those raw edges. It's a lovely sort of traditional block from the 1930s, um, but just looks gorgeous. Um, 4.49 for that ruler. I think that's an absolute steal. It is an absolute steal. Yeah. 
well worth grabbing while you can. Right, that's our Dresden. Right, next up, the easy double wedding ring. That's it. Now then, let me just show you first of all, this is the um, design. It's fabulous. Oh, they're fabulous. I love double wedding ring quilts. They really are gorgeous. And they're kind of from on everybody's wish list, I think, of quilts that people would like to make. So first of all, let me talk you through the different shapes you're gonna cut. So do you see this bright yellow? It's a bit like a square that's been pulled out at the corners. So what you do to make that, you cut yourself a square and then you have a trimming template and you're gonna go around and you're gonna trim this little arc off. So it's this side here. So you line up this straight line with the edge of your square and then you trim from corner to corner to create this yellow shape, this golden yellow shape. Now, next up, you're going to fold some fabric. You're going to create what's called the melon seed, which is this sort of slim oval. OK, so you're going to fold some fabric and then you're going to use this part of the template. Place this line on the fold and you're going to cut around this edge. And when you open out that fold, you end up with your melon seed uh, patch. OK, now then next up you've got. Can you see here? There's like a sort of almost like a lime green and a pink square. So these corner squares. So you've got a strip of fabric that you're going to use this template. So you're going to lay your strip of fabric down, lay this template on top, and you're going to trim, trim to create your squares. And they're gonna go in the corners. And then last of all, you have got your little wedge shapes that you sew together to create the arcs. Now, most of those little pieces are these slim sections in the center. So you have a template for those. And then at either end, you have a sort of a left and a right facing wedge shape. And these are your two templates. So this is the majority of your pieced rings. And then this you're going to do left and right. So what you'll need to do is you'll need to cut these, some with the fabric right side up and some with the fabric right side down. Um, and then you'll get your correct shapes. So all of those templates together, you can rotary cut them all. The price should be $21.99, but have a look at this and be ready to check out your basket. If you have already checked out your basket, you're going to pay not that price, but this. Wow. Wow. $9.99 for those. Wow, that's not even, you're not even paying 50% of the price. $9.99 for that, that's amazing. That is absolutely brilliant. That's a really cleverly designed tool, isn't it? Really cleverly designed tool. Um, simple to cut out. The, the block itself, it's, it's not a beginner block, you know. There is some higher level skills there, but the most important thing is accurate cutting and with these laser cut rotary cutting templates you will get perfect cutting so many of these have gone into baskets well done if you've already checked out your basket you're paying 9.99 you thought you were going to pay 21.99 for this and you know i dare say 21.99 is a really good price it's a really good price. Can we just compare this? I mean, I know this might not help. <laughs> might not help this one. But this is the Creative Grids double wedding ring template set. How much is this? So this shape here, this is what you use this part to cut. This is the whole template. So it's slightly set out differently. I think they're about £35, these. 
£38.99. And that doesn't crash. This is 9 pounds This is wonderful, don't get me wrong. These are wonderful. And it's got all the non-slip lines and that kind of thing. This doesn't have non-slip dots on it. Okay, but 9 99 that's got a lot going for it, hasn't it? Yeah, you know, it just goes to show there's a right a range of prices. And obviously, you know, this is a slightly different process for cutting out. But my top tip, actually, if you want to um, make this a non-slip ruler, get yourself a can of 404 spray not 505 get 404 and spritz the back of your template with that and it will create a non-slip surface on the back of your ruler on your templates which you can wash off with warm soapy water when you're done but it stays kind of sticky and tacky. It won't leave a residue on your fabric, but it will stop your template slipping on your fabric. So just a light split spritz. That's going to sell out if we're not careful. Brilliant. Right. Easy flying geese. Flying geese. Do you want a price crash? $13.99. Not today. $6.99, $6.99. Um, and this effectively is the quarter square triangle. It's like the quarter square triangle ruler I showed you earlier on from Creative Grids, but this is the easy quilting version. This is $6.99. This is $6.99, it is a bargain. And what you've got there is this you use for creating your large flying geese, your large sky, no, sorry, your geese. And then you use this side and these lines in teal for your half square triangles. So you cut quarter square triangles of different sizes and half square triangles of different sizes for 6 99 Gosh, that is a bargain. That is a real bargain. That's amazing. That's amazing. Wow. Easy quilting. It's always been, you know, it, it's, a, it's a budget range of rulers. They offer a huge amount of value. They really, really do. Slide along log cabin. Slide along log cabin. Oh, thank you. Got it. The slide along log cabin. <laughs> Brilliant. 649 for this. 649. So look, here's your strip. It's two and a half inches wide, isn't it? So here we go. Look, two and a half inch wide strips or jelly roll in three colors. Layer two fabrics with right sides up. Beginning on the left edge of the fabric, place the ruler with the two and a half inch mark at the left edge of the fabric strips. Cut the fabric at the edge of the ruler. Also cut a two and a half inch square from the third fabric. Continue with the strips. Slide the ruler to the four and a half inch mark maker cut. Repeat this at all measurements through to the ten and a half inch mark. So you cut here, 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 here and here. And then you pick, well that's so simple. That's so simple. And it's £6.49. That's great. That's great. So you're going to use that with your two and a half inch strip rolls, your jelly rolls, or you can cut your own yardage. I mean, this ruler itself is a two and a half inch wide. So if you wanted to use it for something like fat quarters or scraps, great scrap busting ruler as well, isn't it? For £6.49. Gosh, we've been sitting on these, haven't we? Right, easy quarter. Do you have a picture of it? This one here. Ah, got you. Okay, so this is um, Drunkard's Path. Drunkard's Path template. They call it quarter circle, but um, it is really uh, Drunkard's Path. 
So you've got templates for the quarter circle and also for the background. They're fab, aren't they? Are we gonna, oh, Ben, should be 17.99. I've no idea where we're going. Wow, wow. Better than half price, 8.99. This is a little Christmas gift, isn't it? My goodness me. Um, again, rotary cutting. Top tip actually from me would be when you're cutting rotary, uh, rotary cutting curves, you are better with one of the smaller blade rotary cutters. So like a 28 mil rotary cutter, just handles those curves a little bit more easily. You can use a 45 mil blade, but I would go to the 28 mil. But $8.99, what a fantastic price. That is absolutely brilliant. <clears throat> you know, the quality is great. They have been under the radar, Ben. These have been completely under the radar. These are the kind of things I didn't even know we sold. But they are so well priced. And what's really nice about this is these can be used with charm packs. These can be used with charm packs. In fact, they're designed to use with charm packs or, uh, you know, layer cake squares because you, you get four charm squares. Right, the patchwork heart. Ooh. Oh, this is cute. This is cute. So, can you see the little heart-shaped block? or here. So it's made from two half rectangle triangles, a rectangle, and then you've got the little top of the heart, which looks like, oh gosh, where would you even start? Well, what you've got are these two simple templates. This one cuts the half rectangle triangles. And then this one, you cut two different shapes out of. And I'll just show you there. So you use the whole template to cut out the top of the heart. And then you use just this triangle to cut out the bit that goes in between. 10 pound coming off, 8.99 for that. That's brilliant. And it makes a completed block, which is nine inches square. Fantastic. And they've all got these like holes drilled in them. So what you could do is you could actually use like a split ring to put that through there to keep them together because they're a set. Now I've got three more easy quilting rulers. Should we do the hound's tooth? Oh, I like that. Oh, I like that. Look at this. Look, well, look at the designs that you can do. How cool. And check this out. Look what you're going to pay. $5.99. That is, that's a sleeper. That's brilliant. Look at those. Really clever. It's a really clever block. And this is a 12 inch block. When, I think when you put four of them, you put four units together. So there's a square and then there's like a stripey block. Can you see, if you look in here, it's ever so clever how it works. So you've got two plain squares, the black and the cream. And then you've got two squares that are made up of diagonal strips sewn together. And together they make up the hound's tooth. It's a really clever block. And look, there's your templates for $5.99. Huh, love it. Really clever. Well, I've never seen these. I've never seen these. Um, now, these next ones, we've got the companion angle triangle ruler. Ending 3-8. From Darlene Zimmerman, the Companion Angle Triangle Ruler. Not $13.99. Wow, $6.99 for that. Be well worth quickly Googling these. This is Darlene Zimmerman. 
companion angle triangle ruler from Easy Quilting. Do a quick Google at home. See what it can do for you, but don't hang about because these are going to sell out. $6.99. $6.99. We've also got, this is the Easy Angle Triangle Ruler. The Easy Angle Triangle Ruler. You're kidding me. Should be $6.99. What are we going to sell this for? <gasps> Amazing. Three pounds and 49 pence. It's less than your postage. Absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. The easy angle triangle ruler. If you've bought anything today, I would grab one of these. Fabulous. Absolutely brilliant. Some real bargains on the rulers today. Some real bargains. Absolutely fab, yeah. Well, so many rulers that I've never seen before. Terrific. Absolutely brilliant prices. Right, we're going to go to a break. Uh, remember, during the break, check out your baskets on those rulers because they will sell out. Um, and after the break, I'll be joined by Susie Duncan. See you after this. Every day, our experts will bring you a wealth of knowledge. They'll take you through the steps of making projects and we feature fabulous tips along the way. Whether you're new to sewing or a seasoned pro, you're sure to learn something new. We're live every day from 8 a.m. till 1 p.m. And you can also watch back all of the demonstrations featured on the show on our YouTube channel. Did you know that we can deliver to over 20 different countries worldwide, spanning four continents from the UK to Australia? Check out our website for the list of countries and delivery costs. Sewing Street, stitching the world together. Our UK-based call centre is always on hand to assist you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Here at Sewing Street, we're always looking at ways to make your shopping experience better. That's why on certain items, we have split pay. So with the split pay, depending on the price of the item, you can split the cost twice, three times or four times. So that means you pay once, then you pay monthly until it's finished. And you know what? We do not charge any interest whatsoever. Isn't that fantastic? Split pay, you say? Well, yes, please. I'm off to buy myself something fabulous. Shopping with Sewing Street couldn't be easier. You can shop via our website at www.sewingstreet.com where you can watch our live shows and see all the products from that day. We also have a huge amount of products on our website from your sewing room essentials to fabrics, sewing machines and much more. You can download and shop on the go with our Sewing Street app. Simply head over to your app store and search Sewing Street. Alternatively, you can contact our UK-based call centre 24 hours a day on 0800 001 4433. Shopping made easy at Sewing Street. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. Head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Are you having trouble finding the ideal gift for that someone special? Then why not treat them to a Sewing Street gift card? Simply head over to the website and scroll down to the bottom of the page and click where it says gift cards. You can decide between posting the card or delivery by email, then decide the value that you would like to send. Whether it's for a birthday, a special occasion or just a way to say thank you, the Sewing Street gift card is the perfect answer. Here 
Margaret Sewing Street, we only charge one P&P throughout the day. You can add as many items to your basket and check out and still only be charged once. Once you've checked out the first time and want to order again, you simply add the item to the basket and click on the Combine Order button. Remember, standard P&P is £3.95. Charges may differ for outside the UK. Or upgrade to our premium option for £5.95 on certain items. Shopping made easy at Sewing Street. Shopping with Sewing Street couldn't be easier. You can shop via our website at www.sewingstreet.com where you can watch our live shows and see all the products from that day. We also have a huge amount of products on our website from your sewing room essentials to fabrics, sewing machines and much more. You can download and shop on the go with our Sewing Street app. Simply head over to your app store and search Sewing Street. Alternatively, you can contact our UK-based call centre 24 hours a day on 0800 001 4433. Shopping made easy at Sewing Street. Here at Sewing Street, we're always looking at ways to make your shopping experience better. That's why on certain items, we have split pay. So with the split pay, depending on the price of the item, you can split the cost twice, three times or four times. So that means you pay once, then you pay monthly until it's finished. And you know what? We do not charge any interest whatsoever. Isn't that fantastic? Split pay, you say? Well, yes, please. I'm off to buy myself something fabulous. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. Head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope, and you're done. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. I don't know how I do it, but I've just managed to prove that it is possible to eat a chocolate cupcake in 60 seconds. Perfect. Do you think that's quite an achievement? It is, because they weren't small cupcakes. No, they weren't small, but <laughs> neither's my mouth. Um, <laughs> Susie Duncan, everyone. She had the gorgeous chocolate cupcakes. Delicious. Are they all right? Delicious. Absolutely <laughs> gorgeous. Thank you. Um, now, welcome back to Sewing Street. This hour, I've got the lovely Susie Duncan. And look at that gorgeous quilt that's hanging behind her. It is stunning. It's like through the year en Paris. It is. Isn't it? Calendar girls. Oh. It's French style. It's fab. <laughs> <laughs> it's called the Bonjour Quilt Kit. And it's using fabric from the Calendar Girls collection from Anne Keenan Higgins. It's produced by Free Spirit and it really is a gorgeous kind of, it is sort of girls having fun in Paris, isn't it? It is. Throughout the year. Yeah, it's, it's a really charming, fun it is. quilt. It It'd be is. a lovely one to do for a, a younger girl yep. and they can grow up with it. Yeah. Because it's not necessarily for little people, it's not necessarily for older people there's just so much detail in the pictures mm. i love it it is so, it's gorgeous yeah. i'm um, a younger person and perfect I love it. lap size yeah yeah well it's 125 centimeters by 114 centimeters so that is a lovely lap size quilt um i love those lovely soft pinks yeah. and blues and fresh greens it's just really pretty isn't it Let's open the box up and have a look what's inside. Now, um, here's your pattern. And full instructions. You've got a gorgeous bundle of fabric inside. You've also got a little package of fabric separate to that, which I will ask Susie about in just a second. But let's open up the kit and see what's inside. I Ooh. love the way their kits are wrapped. It they makes are beautiful. it feel so special. Yeah, it always feels like you're unwrapping a gift, even mm. if it's for you. Nothing wrong with that, eh? Beautiful bit of ribbon there. And let's start having a little look at these fabrics. 
So you've got some gorgeous, they've all got quite a sort of, I don't know, a calendar feel. It's called Calendar Girls, isn't it? The range. Yes. Um, oh, by the way, spoiler alert, we're not staying at 149.99. Do you want to see what you are going to pay? Let's do it right now. Here we go. Uh, under a hundred pounds. It's 99.99. That's crazy. You get a lot of fabric in this kit. Seize the day. Time flies when you're having fun. Hello, sunshine. Um, these aren't just random phrases coming out of my mouth. <laughs> They're on the fabric, Bruce. Look, look. Hello, hello, sunshine. Fabric to the left, eyes to the right. Here we go. Look, time flies when you're having fun. Hello, sunshine. Seize the day. Seize the copy diem. Carpe diem, yes. And a very sophisticated young lady having fun on a bicycle. Um, that is one of the fabrics. This is cute. I think I've little... modelled quite a few of these. I think they, I think it's you. Especially the book reader. That's definitely me. Yeah, there are some lovely images, There's aren't there? There's some fab images. Here's kind of pumpkins and blossoms. I love that fabric. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Yeah. Everything sort of looks hand-drawn. Um, lots of girls in hats. Oh, this is cute. This is cute. Hats throughout the year. Should get this for Charlie. Little yeah. straw hats, woolly hats, French berets. I oh, love yeah, a beret. Good in a beret. Can't a work. double pom-pom hat. Very nice. Love those. Gorgeous. Like the Easter bonnet as well with yeah. the on it. Yeah. Oh, they're really fun, aren't they? Really fun. They all look a bit like Audrey Hepburn as well, don't they? They've got yeah. that sort of chic. They have that Parisian, Parisian naivety look. in their yes. faces. Yeah. Uh, um, flower girls. Here we go. Look, here's another of the fabrics. So all the ladies with bouquets of flowers in all different sort of seasonal arrangements. So here we've definitely got... This is December, isn't it? She's got her fur, fur lined gloves and her holly and berries. Here's, I'm thinking, maybe April with tulips. Maybe September with sunflowers. The roses, that's definitely June, July, isn't it? She's wearing three quarter length capri pants. It must be June. Well, it, I don't know. The weather's so mild. <laughs> I know. I wouldn't get my capri pants any other month. But um, lovely, gorgeous, fun fabrics, aren't they? Um, and then you've got this wonderful... I love this panel. This is fabulous. It this is. is a panel here. I'll, I'll hold it up first of all so you And can you're see. not going to use all of it. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's fab. So you can cherry pick which of your characters you use. Yeah. And the leftovers you, I would use for the back and put some on the back. So you use eight of back. these panels? Yeah, yeah, you only use eight of the ladies. Mm -hmm. um, well, actually, you only use six because the middle two aren't. Oh, I see. But I would switch these out and use eight, have eight oh, ladies on I the front too. and four on the back. I think I would too. piece the back yeah, is yeah. what I would do. Yeah, absolutely. Look, we've got... Um, this is definitely January, isn't it? Ice skating in Central Park. Yeah. And then February. Valentine's. Love. Yeah, very nice. Uh, all in green for March. St. Patrick's Day and all of that shenanigans. Easter. Um, April showers in Paris. That was an and Audrey then, Hepburn film. So that's, then May, get on your bike. Oh, the dog looks alarmed. <laughs> yeah, possibly, cycling through flower fields in Amsterdam. We're still in Paris, Ben. Yes. Get with the programme. Yeah. So there's May, June, swing, June. Yeah. July, enjoying a cool drink. I imagine possibly lying by the pool. Yes. And then August, we've gone to the beach. We have, definitely. Very much gone to the beach uh, in August. <laughs> then, uh, September, 
This is you reading the book. This is me reading my pile. That, that pile of books is probably what's on my bedside cabinet that Almost I'm certainly. intending to read mm. over Christmas. Mm. I like the fact that even the squirrel's reading a book. Absolutely. Nice touch. October, witchy poo. Witchy poo. The detail, though, it's is brilliant, incredible. isn't it? Yeah, it's fabulous. Uh, November. November. Maybe a Thanksgiving pie, a pumpkin pie. Yeah. And then December. Well, for me, it's my birthday cake. <laughs> oh, lovely. Yes. And then in December, everyone's getting a knitted gift. And there are also lots of lovely coordinating squares along the sides of this panel. So that's the panel that you get included. And then there's more. There's more. Yeah. So in here, then, you get this section. This is for the centre of the quilt. Yes. So when the qu uh, quilt kit was first put together, um, the centre panel was printed, but the dimensions of the characters' squares meant that you didn't have... The, we chopped too much off. You didn't mm -hmm. get as much in there. So what they did was reprint it so that you've got more characters going to appear in the middle. Got you. So they are you, they, they're identical in their pictorial image. Yes. But different dimensions. So our quilt will look like the one that's Absolutely. hanging behind you. Yeah. And here's that lovely fabric here, isn't it gorgeous? Absolutely lovely. So there you've got each month, all of those lovely images from the larger panel, but scaled right down. And of course, you don't use all of this for the centre of the quilt. No, you don't. And you don't use it anywhere else, yep. which means that you can use what you have left over. You've got all of this that was in the original quilt bundle oh. as well. Oh, of course you do. So you have got... So could you use that instead? If you want you could, to. yeah, you could. You've just got a different scale of print. Wow. Um, that's all they've done with it. It's not, yeah, it's not, it's not quite wide enough. So what they've done is they've reprinted it in a different scale, but given you more fabric. Right. But this would make an awesome, if you imagine the back of your quilt. Yeah. Why don't you use this bit? Let me just open it up. Gosh, my fingers are cold, so my, they don't work. This you could do as a strip in the yeah. middle yeah. and put whatever you want either side. Mm. And then you've not got to find loads of extra fabric for your back. No, absolutely. You could do yeah. that, couldn't you? That's amazing. So you get that. And then look, you get all of this as well. So you get this gorgeous pink coordinate. I know it's incredible. Amazing, you get this lovely pink, then you get this lovely blue. And then also you may have noticed a really gorgeous pink solid in the quilt and you get that included as well. Yep. Um, so that is an amazing value quilt. Can I just let you know, how many do I have left, Ben? Wow, I've got less than 20 left and they're all spoke. Well, they're not spoken for, they're all in baskets. Um, all it takes is for someone to check out and we won't have enough. So I urge you to check out your basket. That is just a delightful, delightful quilt kit. Easy to put together? Oh, super easy. Will you show us how? I'm going to. Thanks, um, Now there are a couple of housekeeping slash information. I'm going to be the information board for a minute. So in the instructions, which are detailed, mm -hmm. lots of diagrams as well as the words, there is a cutting guide. There has been a um, misprint mm -hmm. of one of the cutting guides. Mm -hmm. So when you get your kit, you will be give, sent the, um, a, an extra sheet that tells you the cutting guide for fabric C okay. and the revision to step two to match it. Yeah. It's just that there was a misprint yeah. that we've... Um, highlighted and has been rectified so everything is right with regards to the quantity of fabric you get mm -hmm. but i just wanted to make sure that you you are aware that that extra bit you get is important yes um so not only are you getting extra fabric yes we're giving you extra tips as well absolutely 
Absolutely. So, um, <clears throat> as with all of the um, Hello Hobby quilts, you've got a lovely picture of what you're aiming at, which I always like, on the front. Mm -hmm. And then you've got your full list of fabrics. And because they are all different, I didn't have to label anything. I knew just from right, the pictures yeah, you can see. which was which, which meant it was quite an easy one to cut and and um, put together. Yeah. There are, um, you'll need to press your fabrics first. I press and then start, uh, best press mm -hmm. and then press again mm -hmm. my fabrics and then I start cutting. But before you do any of that, I would recommend that you read the instructions so okay. you know in your head what you're going to do. If you follow the cutting guide, um, let me, I just want to draw your attention to this, these squares, which are the mix and match, higgledy piggledy, so you're not seeing matching squares. Mm -hmm. Brilliant, these ones. But if you want all your ladies to be vertical, mm -hmm. you don't want some on their side. Sure, no, absolutely. Then you will need to have a, a think about how you're cutting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and my tip, I don't know if you have to excuse my scribble and bear in mind, I do write very small, so it is a bit small scribble. But what I did is for each of the, <laughs> can you focus on it? <laughs> um, each of the blocks, what I did is um, I wrote that there are four blocks, three, four, five and six. And for each one, I wrote what size of each of the four fabrics I needed labelled which of the sizes was my vertical. Yes, which was so, the directional one. Yeah, so then I could work out how to cut. Does that make sense? It does make sense, and it's a really good good tip, actually. Um, because if I've you, only got six kits left. Oh, my gosh. If you, what happened? I don't, well, they're They've just so pretty. They've suddenly flown out. That um, can happen. That if can you happen. cut as per the instructions, you won't necessarily have the ladies all standing. Ah, uh, understood. Is what I'm going to say. So, one thing you have got to do is fussy cut mm -hmm. um, to get these ladies in the middle. So I thought we would fussy cut. Great, yeah, one that's now. A special skill. It is. So I'm going to give this another press because I'm cutting it exactly. So I want to make sure it is as it should be to start with. I've already best pressed it, so. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to use the Stripology squared ruler. Okay. And that's very good for squaring up blocks. So it is. It's a kind of squaring up, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Am I going to use this one? Did I say I was going to use this one? I'm just trying to remember what I've got to cut. A seven inch I've got to cut. Um, you can't use this one, can we? Yes, I can. No, I can't. Yes, I can. It's all right. I'm working out. Because you've got your seven inch clearly marked for you. So if you have it the normal way round, ignore the white lines mm -hmm. and look at your seven solid line because then what you can do is place it over, and I don't want to get my head in the way, sorry, place it over my block and work out where the midline is mm -hmm. of everything. Now I know that three and a half is half of seven. So I want to make sure I'm halfway through my block at three and a half mm -hmm. in both directions, which I am. I also want to make sure, don't go by the printing because fabrics are never, well, much as they try to print them square, they're not always no, printed true. square. So don't be thinking it's going to be perfectly square because it probably won't be. But you get your best shot at it. Um, and the reason I like to use the stripology is because I can introduce my rotary cl cutter into those little teardrops mm -hmm. without interfering with the next cut down. Because yeah. the last thing I want to do is to do a seven inch cut all right, the way up. Because I'm going to interrupt what I'm, is happening below. Yeah. So I'm going to go for that one. You've also got your diagonals so you can see that that's going through your 45 degree angle is going through your corners mm -hmm. and if it isn't then you can realign so now I can cut my seven inch so I'm going to cut this there's two sides first and in fact I can go straight up this and then what I do is turn this round 
and move everything out of the way. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter how much space you have, you've never, never got enough. enough. So then I'll realign, but this time my seven solid line is going to be on those cut lines that I've got. And my 45, I'm still going to take through those corners and make sure everything's realigned, which it is. And then I can just cut those two. Gotcha. And then I've got my seven inch mm. perfect square. And you see oh. what I mean? I've got more of a border on one yes. side than the other, but it's still within the seam allowance. Yeah, so yeah. when I come to sew, that will be where I need it to be. Got you. Okay, got so you. don't worry if you've got some of that extra. Quick tip though, you can use these to mm. piece strips oh, if yeah. you wanted to do a fussy binding. Oh, nice. Which would be really cool. So I'm going to just put that out the way and we're going to stitch this together. So the two, you've got two styles of block um, for your main ones and they're all put together in the same way. Mm -hmm. You're going to start with your um, blue mm -hmm. strips and it doesn't matter how you cut these because all the icons in it go either way. Ah, good. Which so it's is not really brilliant. directional. No, you ah. can do whatever you like. Um, last few of the quilt kits available now, literally less than a handful, uh, 99.99. If you want split pay, by the way, somebody was asking earlier on, what does split pay mean? How does it work? Do I pay more? You don't pay a penny more than paying the whole amount in one go. There's no credit check to go through or a form to fill in. You literally just choose split pay. I've got three kits left now. Um, 10 in baskets. When you get to check out, just choose split pay. And today you'll pay 33 pounds and 33 pence. That's it. You'll get your quilt kit home. You can make the whole thing up before your next payment is due next month. Yeah. Absolutely. So you'll have another payment in January and one more payment in Feb. And that's it. You're done. This is a really quick quilt to put yeah, together. Yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? Yeah. But if you are new to quilting, it's a really nice one to practice sewing your quarter inches and piecing things, but also to practice your free motion quilting. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so I've, I'm going to press. It doesn't tell you how to press your seams. I chose to press mine open mm -hmm. because I'm joining a lot of seams together. Yes. And that's just personal preference. The other tip that I would have is because each block has to be a finished set size, I trim as I go. Okay. So that I know everything is on track. Right, and it's all going to fit together. It's all going to fit together because it is like a jigsaw at the end. Mm -hmm. So it's worth doing that. So I'm just going to bring in my stripology again and make sure that that's all square. Like you said, um, Susie, this is a brilliant quilt for those tweens, they're called, aren't they? Yeah. Um, you know, somewhere between, you know, uh, kind of like infants and senior school. Yeah. There's that sort of funny middle age, isn't there? Yeah. Where it's difficult to know. You don't want something that's babyish. No. Or toddlerish. You don't want something that's too sophisticated and too grown up but you want something that's going to fit those middling, twiddling years. Yeah. And uh, this is just gorgeous for that. I also think it's a really nice one for one of the naughty birthdays. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, 40th, 50th. Yes. I mean, I'd be dead chuffed with this. Well, especially if one of those naughty birthdays involves going to Paris. Yeah, yeah. That would just be amazing. And you could do it as a... Um, a calendar because you could switch out these as calendar girls as well so you could make sure that the birthdays I'd put like all the family birthdays mm -hmm. make sure I've used those months or my favorite times of year to be fair it's every time of year so that would be tricky oh I've literally got one kit left I've got one kit left now, usually that one kit, Susie, will Hangs. sit there because <laughs> everyone assumes I've missed out. 
I've no, missed out. There's one it. left. I've yeah. missed out. There's no point. If you're quick, if you go online now and check out your basket or call our call centre 0800 001 4433, um, you could be the one that checks out and gets that, that basket. This would be a lovely project to do um, in the new year oh, for yourself. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm going to finish this as my lap quilt in my workroom. Lovely. So for that, on that rare occasion, I do sit down. Mm -hmm. Then yes. I've got something to keep my knees warm. Yes, that's a nice idea. <laughs> yeah. Um, ben, a question for you. Sue oh. asks, I missed earlier, who won the £100 prize draw yesterday? <gasps> we haven't announced it, have we, Ben? Ooh. There was a shop to win on web sales. If you bought online, anything online yesterday, there was a prize of a £100 voucher. Mmm. We maybe email and ask. Be good to know, especially if it was, you know, someone who's watching right now. That would be amazing, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. That would be amazing. Ah, um, absolutely. It would be really cool, actually. So let me just check where I'm up to with this. So this, I want this to be eight and a half. So it tells you to double check everything. Mm -hmm. So I'm just making sure I'm at the eight and a half and I am. And it is worth just double checking. As we said in the previous show, if you keep everything aligned, everything straight as you go, mm -hmm. a finished project is achievable without stress. Mm. Ah, well done. The kit sold out. <gasps> uh, that last one went. Very well good. Well done. Um, now you will need some backing fabric. And I've got some backing bundles. Let me show you what I've got. Now, the, we've got some solids. The lemon has been the most popular. I've only got five of those left. I've got four different options. They're all absolutely delightful. And they all actually go really nicely. Mm. So we'll Ooh, start with the like lemon yellow. This is been... ice cream. I know, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. Gorgeous. The um, lemon yellow has been the most popular so far. So in your bundle, um, you get three metres of fabric. You save two pounds. It's really well priced, isn't it? 20 pounds and 74 pence. So you're just going to do either a vertical or a horizontal seam. Two panels. Um, you'll have leftovers. It's 100% cotton. Beautifully soft. Great quality, this. Great price as well. So that's the lemon option. Should we do the green? And I'm just going to grab one of the fabrics just to show you what a lovely match that is. This is apple. Perfect. Apple green. It's a lovely match. Really lovely match. Or like this one. I was going to say that one would really pop. Mm, gorgeous. So that's your apple green. You get, again, three metres. So just cut it in half, sew it together side by side, you know, and then have that seam either sent, uh, vertically or horizontally. It doesn't matter which. And, um, and that's I your backing fabric. I would join it with my four, the four spares. I would have the four spares oh, yeah. going down the centre nice and have idea. that either side. And two so panels either side, yeah. one either side. Yeah. Yeah, that's a nice idea. I like that. Yeah, I mean, if you want to use some of your front fabrics to piece into the back as well, I mean, you wouldn't need as much as three metres. But yeah, the bundle will do the whole thing. Yeah. Right, next up, we've got the pink. Is this a rose pink? Coral. Mm, coral. Again, I'm just going to grab that fabric so you can see it's just a lovely match for those coral pinks in the printed fabrics. So three metres of coral, two pounds saving, 20 pound and 74 pence. And then the last uh, backing bundle option we've got is this fabulous turquoisey blue. This is called Sky. Oh, oh, I wouldn't say no to a sky that colour. Oh, wouldn't that be glorious? Mmm, beautiful. Yeah, a bit different from today's sky. I know. And again, look, it just goes really, really nicely with those fabrics. It's just gorgeous, isn't it? £20.74. pence. just got to pick your colour, really. So that's your backing. It's awesome. How are you getting on, Susie? I'm good. I've finished this block, so yeah. I'm just going to press it this last seam and then I'll show you how to do the 
the higgledy piggledy box, <laughs> for want of another term. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's our calendar girl block. Yeah. And you're going to end up making six of these. Okay. No, eight of these. Eight. Six, six of these. Six of your calendar girls, and then you make two using one of your icon fabrics. Mm. They suggest this one, but you don't have to. You've got enough fabric. I, you, I chose to use the hats one for mine because I liked the hats one. Yeah, it's lovely. You but know, you could just use thinking, a bit of Susie, scrubs. you yeah. could do a little bit of a redesign yeah. on that because I love the fact that you've got all 12 months. Yeah. And I, and I think, oh, I want to use them all. So I was just thinking, if you had... Let me just come around. I'll show yeah, you. Yeah, I was trying... Was with you because I want all four. So what I was thinking was, if you had, like December, January, February, yeah, and then one of these blocks there. here, yeah, are they the same size? Do they yes. fit? Yeah. Yes. And then you could have uh, March, March, April, April May, May, and a spare block. Yeah. June, July, August, yeah. spare block. September, October, November, spare, spare block. block. And there's your December. Yeah. And you might have to use some of these fabrics to do the borders around and mix them up. But you could do that then, Absolutely couldn't you? And then you have all 12 yeah. months. Yeah, you could. Options. Because then you could do it. So, you, so you've got spring, spring corner, yeah. autumn, yeah. winter and... Summer. That's it. That's it. Yeah, you see, that's exactly how I'd written in my notes mm. I was going to do it. Because I was... You don't have keen. to follow no. patterns or kits to the letter at the all. Ki the kit as it is makes a fabulous yeah, it's lovely. project. Yeah, it's lovely. But it's... If you want to tweak it, yeah. if you aren't... If you're a, an advanced quilter, you can take this to another level by tweaking and doing different things with it. Mm -hmm. So let's do one of the odd bods. Oh, yes. So this is um, what is called in the pattern block four. So it, you're joining, and it's the same four fabrics every time, but they're cut to different sizes, and they are. it's important that you look at which fabric does what. So I've cut all these, and I, as we did in the previous hour, I always lay my block out so I can see what's going on. She says. <laughs> okay, so I know it doesn't look like that should work, but it does. The important thing is with this one that you do it in rows. Some of them you're going to assemble in columns mm -hmm. rather than rows because of the way the seams fall. Mm -hmm. So you do need to follow the destructions. Yeah, sure. And I can see as well there that sort of three of those fabrics are directional. They are. So you do need to keep careful notes about which direction to cut your fabrics, don't yeah. you? Yeah, so what Take I... Take your time. What I did was when I was cutting for a particular block, in this case block four, I cut the pieces and put them in with a clip with the number four on, mm -hmm. so that I knew these were for block four. Mm. The other thing um, I did was fussy cut, so that I got the girls in the right place or the sayings were in this outside the seam allowance. Mm -hmm. You've got enough fabric, not to, to waste loads, mm. but enough just to shuffle a couple mm -hmm. of, a quarter of an inch or, you know, so to, to get what you want. So we're going to match these two together, right sides together, and sew those two. And then do the same with the others. And again, these blocks are super quick to put together. So that you can then put the whole thing together. And the centre panel is literally cut the centre panel to size mm -hmm. and then put your borders on the sides and then the top. Yes. And that's it done. Ah. So that bit is totally... And I noticed easy. in the pattern as well, it suggests that once you've sewn the borders on that centre panel, that you trim the block to measure the yeah. given size. Yes. And that will just make all of those piece blocks fit properly fit just yeah. right won't it and that's why throughout the pattern at every stage it tells you what the block should measure even though it's not at its final stage Got it tells you. you what it should be i obviously miss um, so measure as you that. go then and make sure that's why i double check everything yeah. like for this one i've obviously cut this one incorrectly i was having a bad day obviously 
So I'm going to join those two together. And there's no seam matching Hurrah. on this one. It's just joining, so that's perfect. And then this final block um, comes together. And it's each measurement you need to make sure is right afterwards. Mm -hmm. So what I do once I've pressed it is double check that it's right and trim as accordingly. Okay. Um, and again, on the back of the pattern, there is a layout diagram where it's numbered each block so you know which block is where. So mm -hmm. if you do want to do what we'd suggested, you know, with switching out and doing different things, mm. then uh, you can do that. I'll show you that one here. So you you can, what you could do is photoc well, photocopy or in pencil, I would just miss, I would write what was what mm -hmm. on here. Mm -hmm. So I knew what I was cutting for where. Mm -hmm. And then I knew I'd got to cut, instead of cutting two of each of um, three, four, five, six, I knew I'd, because of only needing four, I could do a three, four, five, six. Does that make sense? I think I understand, It's yes. like bingo, yeah. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> I know what I mean, but if you were gonna do what we said and, and use the pictures around right. the corners. yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd only need one of the, of, yes, the, you would. of the bits and pieces box. Yes, you would. In the middle of each one. So that does make sense. I would then just write notes in pencil or on yeah. a post-it note to, so that I didn't keep getting lost, if that makes sense. It does. So I would then make sure this was the size it needs. Now, the, you do need to be aware that the three, four blocks are a different size to the five, six. Ah, okay. Because you need a narrower block here right. than you do here. Understood, yeah? understood. So make sure that when you're putting them together, you're following the right, although you think, oh, it's obvious how they go. Ah, That's I great, see. but make sure you're trimming them to mm -hmm. the right size, otherwise you, it won't fit where you think okay, it's going to. Okay, fair enough. Does that make sense? Yep, 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 yep. Cool. Oh, good. So do you have to trim that block down? I am going to trim it down. Okay. Because. I'm not sure what I was doing when I put this together, obviously asleep. <laughs> but it's quite good actually that there is a bit of trimming to do at the end because it means you block yeah. how, whatever your piecing's like, you'll end up with the right size yeah, block. I think I've picked up the wrong pieces on this one. Yeah, because this isn't coming out as it should. So I've obviously picked up wrong pieces. Oh. Don't We're having a funny there. morning, you I and I, am. aren't we? It is weird. Shall I try? I'd like to say that we'd had Christmas sherry, but we haven't. <laughs> Maybe the, well, I haven't even had a cake, so it is. Perhaps mate, it's can't that. Blame it's it on cake. that. It's lack of cake. I think it could be. Let's try this one. I don't know what. I oh, Christine's there. got in touch to say uh, she was late. She just got up. She had a well-deserved sleep in this morning as she was up till one a.m. <gasps> finishing Christmas gifts. Well, to be fair, I'm still finishing Christmas. Yeah, I, only, uh, they're I all wrapped. wrapping yet. Oh, I've done my wrapping, but I just keep thinking, oh, I could just make this for so-and-so. Oh, I could just make that. Oh, yes, I can make myself this, that and the other. And yeah. of course, pff, I've still got to go shopping. I know, I know. This is the thing. It's the best laid plans, though. Yeah, it so doesn't it, seem to matter how early you start preparing there's, there's always a bit of a last minute panic if or you just say hey you know what what will be will be well i am at that stage to mm. be honest um but if everyone could just vacate the supermarkets for between 12 and 1 right. i would be very Tomorrow. grateful no today oh today yeah, so that i can just do my market. shop and then you can do whatever you like because yeah. yeah. then i can shut the door and <laughs> <laughs> work through my to-do list. Yeah. <laughs> Is that going to happen, do we think? I think it's unlikely. Do you? I think yeah. that's just rude. Yeah. So Christmas Day, yes. are you doing, do you do traditional? Um, fairly traditional, yeah. 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 Turkey? Uh, yes, we have got a turkey crown. Yeah, year. I like a crown. Um, and But I will make a nut roast as well because I'm not overly keen on meat. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, And also, I, the nut roast freezes really well, so it's a really nice 
easy okay. supper for yeah. later in the month. So um, we have that. Loads and loads of vegetables. Gorgeous. Absolutely love vegetables. So we have lots of vegetables. Delicious. Um, yeah. You grow, you grow veg, don't you? We do, yeah. yeah. I was so hoping... So you have veg from the allotment? We have got some from the allotment. We've yeah. got green beans. Mm -hmm. um, if it's not pouring with rain still, I shall go and dig up some carrots and potatoes. But mm -hmm. it's just been so claggy. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Even just walking on the allotment, I've picked up half a ton of soil. Oh, so. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was really raining That's earlier better. on, wasn't it? Cold rain too. Oh, that looks better. It does. What yeah. happened to the other one? Goodness knows. <laughs> right, so this one is block five. Um, where's block five gone? There it is. And you're going to make two of each of these. So I know now, look, this, is, this has to be eight by nine. Well, it is coming up as eight, but it's just a tad longer than nine. Is it? Yeah, it is. So what I'm going to do is decide which bits I'm going to cut off. Mm -hmm. I don't need much cutting off and I'm going to do it that way because then I'm not faffing about. So I've got my eight line on the sides and bottom and I'm just going to trim off. Oh no, it is eight and a half by nine and a half. That's good. Yeah, we're all good. Haven't got to trim anything. Well, <gasps> Look at that. My quarter inch worked this she time. She shoots, she scores. I know, it's so exciting. But that's why you measure as you go and it's important to... You know, keep on top of that because then when you come to put these together, mm -hmm. so this block five would join two of these together. So if I do January and December, those two, you can see it comes up the right size. So all you then do is put those two together because there's no sashing in between. No, sure. The so frame it separates it. Makes it, out, it really, it? really quick. Oh, apologies, Christy. She says, I've got to put 10, everyone. <laughs> just to confirm, she hasn't just got up. Sorry, Christy. Um, I know you've been so busy, Stuart Hillard. Uh, Susan, I'm going to read comments out. <laughs> Have a lovely Christmas, everyone. Have a Christmas to you too, Christy. Yeah. Um, do you know as well, sometimes messages come through to me, or they seem to come through quite late sometimes. They yeah. don't always come through when you post them either. No, my... Anyway, if you had had a lie until half eleven, gosh, that sounds lovely to me. Yeah. I haven't had a lie until half eleven since about 1983. <laughs> <laughs> that I don't was think, the last time I had a lie. I don't think in. I ever lie. No, I can't. Even on my days off, I wake up at five, yeah. quarter past five in the morning. Yeah. That's just my body clock now. Yeah. I think once you've done it for so long, your body automatically wakes up. Yeah. Yeah. But I always think sleep is very overrated. So, Do you? Oh, not bothered about sleep. If oh. I could get away with absolutely no sleep, I would. Really? I could pack so much more in. Oh, oh no, but sleep's lovely. Look at that. It looks Gorgeous. so cool. Yeah, it does. It looks really pretty. And then you just build up the pattern that you want after that. Mm, fabulous. Easy. Really cool. Can you give us a few little tips, Susie, on, you know, that centre panel? Yeah. Because I know a lot of people struggle cutting something which yeah. is bigger than their ruler. OK, so let's press it to start yeah. with. That's awesome. My, that's my first, first tip. Mm. Um, mm. Have we got one of the big, long, straight rulers? I am sure. Yes, yes we, do. we do. Do you want eight and a half by 24 yeah, that's and a fine. half? Thank you. Yes, awesome. it's just I've only got the six and a half, which won't be. Yeah, very no helpful. problem. So, Susie, whatever you want, we will get. Oh, well. I mean, within reason. Oh, OK. You start demanding There's glasses all... of champagne. <laughs> no, oh. now I've got to drive. It's fine. Although the shopping might be not more pleasant if I have that. <laughs> so, the first thing you want to do is. Um, make sure that your fabric is fully pressed and mm. everything. And, and make sure you're using the one that's in the little spare yes, plastic so bag. Yes, so I've deliberately used that one. This, so you get a little plastic bag with some fabric in. And if you're not sure, it's the one, if you measure a square, one is slightly smaller than the other and it's the smaller one you want mm. to use. So if mm. you get them muddled, 
The other trick is in the selvage, which, oh, look, at, I meant to say this. Have you seen the selvage? I have not little ladies' heads oh. in the colour print. Isn't that cool? Really cool. Love that. Um, but instead of, um, when you're pressing this, make sure you press the whole width. Don't leave it folded to press. Okay. So you want the whole thing to be fully flat. Mm-hmm. Um, because you don't want any creases there. I know this should um, stand up, but it's not on a thingy mat. I'm just looking for best press. So I'm just going to give this a quick squirt as I go. Why not? Absolutely. Makes well, I just use it for everything. Way. And also I, now I keep my best press when I'm doing my clothes. Yes. Um, because actually I love the smell and I also love the sort of slightly crisper finish that it gives. Yeah. So you've and soft too. as well. Mm. Although it stiffens and supports the fibres, yeah. it also makes the fabric feel nice and soft. Mm. And I have found since using Best Press and Starch Savvy that m you know how normally people say if they're a paper crafter or a sewer, their hands are really dry. Yes. I have found that since I've been using that, my hands don't dry out as much. Really interesting, because yeah. they put a surface on the fabric. Yeah, so, so it's not wicking it's that or I'm spraying myself with Best Press, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> Perhaps it's the seams hand has, cream. Has been, yeah, there is that, although I have run out of that now. So oh, I'm, we can, I'm sure we can sort that out for you, Susie. I'm hoping that no. I get some more of that one. Yeah. Uh, best press, eleven ninety nine. That is for the four hundred ninety nine mil bottle. Can I just give a little spoiler alert? No, don't, because I don't want them to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's in the new year. We will have one litre bottles of best press, which is the biggest size they do. If you run out of best press at an alarming rate you need the one litre bottle I do. they will be coming up in the new year which is rather exciting it is very exciting yeah yeah i'm actually going to move that out the way i think right so we need to cut this at 22 and a half by 26 mm -hmm. i'm also going to move this round so we've got plenty of room and those because i don't want to cut through those so always give yourself lots of space yeah. to do this bit so 22 and a half is my width, 26 and a half is my length. You've got oodles of fabric here, as you can see, because the ruler's 24 and a half inches. So I've got plenty of fabric to do my 26, because mm. I'm only adding two inches onto there. Mm -hmm. And I've got plenty to do my 22 this way. Mm -hmm. So you could... <laughs> nearly get two yeah. out of this, yeah. which is phenomenal. Well, actually, the leftover fabric would be a gorgeous for a bag, wouldn't it? Little... Uh, can you imagine making yourself a shopper? I know. All I year know. round shopper. For, sho Perfect. for shopping in Paris. Yeah. So let's just go from this side, because I'm. if I spend too long deciding, we'll never get anything cut. But what I do want to do is to make sure that I've got an edge that's reasonably in line. Mm -hmm. I don't go by these edges and I don't go by the selvage. No. You want to cut yourself an edge. Now, because I want these characters to be straight, mm -hmm. I'm going to ignore my ruler, sort of. I'm going to put the ruler so that they all come within a certain point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm so that I can cut a straight line. Does that yes. make sense? Yes. Yeah. So what I So you're sort of cutting it straight to the design yes. rather than, than perhaps, you know, cut the very to the fabric. the fabric. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. right. I'm just shuffling everything over so that I'm, did I turn that off? Oh, yeah, I am going to turn that off and then we haven't got to worry. Okay. Do you want me to get rid of the iron altogether for you? Right? I can yeah, put that underneath. Yeah, of course it is. Let me get oh, rid of that. Sorry. Because you do right. really, when you're doing a cutting job like this, you need to clear the desks, yeah, don't you? Do. And you do, and I could do with a bigger cutting mat. But yeah, we'll I can make, get you a bigger cutting mat as well, of course. I am a yeah. bit of a diva. We've got today. everything here at Sewing Street Being Tuesday. Being a bit of a diva today. <laughs> mm -hmm. We've got it all. Look at that. How's that? Who knows? Look at that. It's like being at home now. Fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> Except I haven't got a Vizsla. 
at my elbow, helping. <laughs> I will sort out any problems I can, anything I can do. Ben, Bruce, I can do that. I can do that. Right, so I'm going to place this ruler along here and I'm going to go for it. And you, you, there comes a point where you've faffed enough and you just have to be brave and sure. do it. So let's go for that. Now, when you get to this point, obviously my ruler's run out. So what I do is move that fabric to one side mm -hmm. slightly and then shuffle this down because it's not on the board. Realign my fabric so that everything's flat again. And I can see where I've cut. I can realign my ruler with that cut and then I can continue that cut up. Obviously, if you've got a desk long enough or an arm long enough, you can go straight up without having to do that shuffle. But that gives me that strip I can use for something else. Bag handles. Yeah, for sure. Perfect. So we'll put that back in the box. So that's given me my straight edge for my um, length cut yeah. here. If you like, it's this, it's this side here. Yeah. I've cut. So now I need to do 22 and a half inches. Now you can do it by finding 22 and a half on your ruler here. Remember, this is my straight edge, and then cutting and then shuffling and cutting and shuffling. That's the way I do it. Yeah. Um, you can also do this, which is a bit rogue, but I'm going to do it anyway. Mm -hmm. Oh, don't need that. So find 22 and a half on this one and make sure that that's all aligned and everything is straight. So that's that. Then I bring in this ruler and I match it exactly. And because creative grids have got markings all the way up, I can see that it is exactly lined up. Oh yeah, of course. And that has just lengthened my ruler. Of course, yeah, no, that's a great idea. Well, it's, most of us do have more than one ruler. Exactly, yeah. Great tip. So why not use them? Yeah, it's a great Cut tip. Cut down your, your uh, cutting time, so I'm just shuffling circles. Christine says, John Scott always blames you, Susie Duncan, for the missing rulers. I know he does. does he? I what don't does he know say? why. Like you've says, carried off a ruler. Yeah, I don't know why he says that, because I bring my own. I was going to say, you have an extensive personal collection of Creative Grids rulers, Hence don't you? Hence the number of ruler bags I have exactly, to find. Exactly. Yeah. You're as good as your word. You love rulers. I do. I have five ruler bags under my desk. That's amazing. And in the new year, I am bringing another ruler bag. Oh, uh, ruler are you? caddy, yes. Oh, nice. Good. Good. Yes. Um, Bex says, morning, Stuart, Susie, and everyone watching. Oh, that's lovely. That's Thank really you. Lovely. Um, Thank while you. I'm while trying to, I'm watching while trying to untangle my Christmas tree lights. Oh. Uh, lovely show today. Big Merry Christmas to you all. Merry Christmas to you too, Bex. Right. So if I've done my maths right, look at that. Fab, fab. We're in. So then you need to do the 26. Now we know that. Um, now I've turned it round, top and bottom mm -hmm. are straight. Yep. So I can use those as my guidelines to do my 26. Now, Fab. as we've said, this is, what is this? That's 24 and a half. So you've got 26 and a half, don't you? So this is longer so this than your is, ruler. I'm at 29 inches mm -hmm. here, so I've got leeway. So if you want to, you can fussy cut, but I don't think it matters. No, I everything agree. everything repeats. Mm. I, th I just wanted to make sure my edges were right. Yeah. So I'm going to align a straight edge on my ruler up there mm -hmm. and make sure that it's straight down here, which it is. That's a miracle, isn't it? And then cut... Which careful planning. <laughs> cut myself a straight edge. Then I need 26. Now, this ruler is not long enough. No. So what you can do is fold in half so my straight edges are aligned either side. And if you can do maths, mm -hmm. 
you know that half of 26 and a half is 13 and a quarter. Yes. And you can do it that way. Yes. So you so go from, from the, fold. the fold. Just make sure you don't <laughs> cut the fold off. Always measure from the fold. <laughs> Ask me why I say that. Yeah. Oh, Susie, honestly. Yeah. I've done We've it all more, done I've it. Done it more We've than all once. Done it. We've all more than once, and it's usually with a big, wide border. Yeah, and you've only fabric. got the right oh. amount of fabric. Yeah. And you can't join the two pieces together because no. then it's too short. I know. Do, or stop before you cut now. and think, am I cutting the fold off? If you're cutting the fold off, don't do it. I'm just thinking, I can show you how to do the quarter cut on a stripology. Shall I do it? Have we got time? No, get, no shall keep, I carry on with this? Because I'm just thinking, if you've got a stripology, you can absolutely do it. But yeah. I, everyone's got a ruler. Yeah. So I'm now on 13 and a quarter here. Mm. No, 13 and three quarters I want. What do you want? 26 and a half? 26 and a half. So that's 13, 13 and, and a quarter. quarter. Yeah, I was right. <sighs> always go with your first instinct. But I always stop at that point, Susie. I always and double stop check. And, and I double check. And even though I know it's simple maths and I know I'm right, really, I always stop and yeah. check because the last thing you want to do is cut it by mistake. Yeah, and I always get a calculator out as well. Yeah. So... Oh. And also there are some days where you're just, you know, do you ever get those days where you just feel like your brain isn't working quite as well as it does on other days? Only a day with a Y in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, well last year, you know, I had um, my thyroid basically yeah. um, died. It gave up, <laughs> basically. gave up the ghost. And uh, turned into a stone. And um, because my body was absolutely full of thyroxine mm. and I didn't know, I knew I was ill and I knew there was something wrong with me, you know. And I remember I was doing a quilt and I only had to add, and it was something like 13 and a half and 26 and a half. And mm. I had to add those two numbers together mm. and I couldn't do it. And I tried to do it with pen and paper. I tried to do it in my head. I tried yeah. to do it with a calculator and I couldn't add two numbers. And it no. wasn't even complicated numbers. And I can remember Charlie was in the bath and I remember calling up the stairs, I can't add two numbers, what's wrong oh, with no. me? But one of the symptoms of, of, of uh, hyperthyroidism is fuzzy is brain. Fuzzy brain. Yeah. And it was, it was. And my girlfriends used to say to me, you sound like you're menopausal. It's true. And I was like, and I should have known then yeah. that it was hormonal. Yeah. That it was hormonal. I got fuzzy brain when I was pregnant. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. It's bizarre, yeah. isn't it? You think I can have two numbers things. and so writing. I got I I developed extreme dyslexia, like the word the. Yeah. I mean, it's like seriously. Yeah. <laughs> and you're questioning it. Yeah. So. So there you go. Don't beat yourself up if you need to stop and think five times before you do your cutting. It's far better to do that. Yeah. And get it right. You know there is that adage, isn't there? Measure twice, cut once. Yeah. There are times when I have to do it five so times. So worth it. And there we've got my centre panel. Thank you Look for doing that, Susie. Look how much we have left over. Yeah, that's fab. It and seems like a thing that everyone should be able to yeah. do, but I know we all struggle sometimes no. with that. And I think we naturally assume that when something like this is printed, where it's all in a line, we assume it's going to be printed dead straight. Yeah. Um, and it's not necessarily unlikely. the yeah. case because we're dealing with a natural fibre that's moving we are. and it depends on how you've pressed it everything that's why i say when you get it home before you even cut a strand press it and best press it first and you'll get the best you can out of it um, but they are just such fun designs really fun it would make a all your leftovers yeah. just patch them together yeah. cut them into five inch block of squares and yeah. just do a, a quick patch would you look could, couldn't amazing, you? Wouldn't or even it? something like, um, you know, a little quilted bag. Yeah. For see, yeah, you know. Uh, or caddies of... for your dressing table, yeah. especially if you are gifting this to a, a you know a young at heart person. Yeah. It'd be lovely to have the coordinating caddies. Oh yeah. And pouches. It's gorgeous. Makeup bag, whatever. It'd be really cool. Yeah. It's fab, Love Susie. It. 
We have to go for a break. I'm going to come over and give you yeah, a hug. Thank you. Wish Merry you Christmas. a very Merry Christmas, my darling. Yes, yeah, thank mm. you. Have fun. Me too. Eat have a lovely Christmas. Oh, I already have, Susie. I love mince pies. Already have. Uh, I've eaten my own body weight in Christmas cake. Have you? Which... We haven't touched ours yet. Which We've I'm eaten a... one. I am a bit worried about lifting the tin because there was quite a lot of alcohol in Ooh. our Christmas cake. I'll be round at four. <laughs> right, we're going to a little break now. Um, after we come back, we've got dressmaking, a dressmaking hour, and we've got loads of fantastic dressmaking fabrics by the half metre with special prices. Excellent. Stick around. Every day, our experts will bring you a wealth of knowledge. They'll take you through the steps of making projects, and we feature fabulous tips along the way. Whether you're new to sewing or a seasoned pro, you're sure to learn something new. We're live every day from 8 a.m. till 1 p.m. And you can also watch back all of the demonstrations featured on the show on our YouTube channel. Did you know that we can deliver to over 20 different countries worldwide, spanning four continents from the UK to Australia? Check out our website for the list of countries and delivery costs. Sewing Street, stitching the world together. Our UK-based call centre is always on hand to assist you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Are you having trouble finding the ideal gift for that someone special? Then why not treat them to a Sewing Street gift card? Simply head over to the website and scroll down to the bottom of the page and click where it says Gift Cards. You can decide between posting the card or delivery by email, then decide the value that you would like to send. Whether it's for a birthday, a special occasion, or just a way to say thank you, the Sewing Street gift card is the perfect answer. Here at Sewing Street, we only charge one PMP throughout the day. You can add as many items to your basket and check out and still only be charged once. Once you've checked out the first time and want to order again, you simply add the item to the basket and click on the Combine Order button. Remember, standard P&P is £3.95. Charges may differ for outside the UK. Or upgrade to our premium option for £5.95 on certain items. Shopping made easy at Sewing Street. Shopping with Sewing Street couldn't be easier. You can shop via our website at www.sewingstreet.com where you can watch our live shows and see all the products from that day. We also have a huge amount of products on our website from your sewing room essentials to fabrics, sewing machines and much more. You can download and shop on the go with our Sewing Street app. Simply head over to your app store and search Sewing Street. Alternatively, you can contact our UK-based call centre 24 hours a day on 0800 001 4433. Shopping made easy at Sewing Street. Every day, our experts will bring you a wealth of knowledge. They'll take you through the steps of making projects and we feature fabulous tips along the way. Whether you're new to sewing or a seasoned pro, you're sure to learn something new. We're live every day from 8 a.m. till 1 p.m. And you can also watch back all of the demonstrations featured on the show on our YouTube channel. Did you know that we can deliver to over 20 different countries worldwide, spanning four continents from the UK to Australia? Check out our website for the list of countries and delivery costs. Sewing Street stitching the world together. Our UK-based call centre is always on hand to assist you 24 hours a day, seven days a week.
Here at Sewing Street, we're always looking at ways to make your shopping experience better. That's why on certain items, we have split pay. So with the split pay, depending on the price of the item, you can split the cost twice, three times, or four times. So that means you pay once, then you pay monthly until it's finished. And you know what? We do not charge any interest whatsoever. Isn't that fantastic? Split pay, you say? Well, yes, please. I'm off to buy myself something fabulous. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our final hour on Sewing Street. It's lovely to have your company. Um, this is my final hour before I'm driving home for Christmas. Do, 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 do. Oh, I'm excited to see family. I'm excited. It's been lovely to spend the day with you, though, of course. Um, now, uh, I've got all kinds of fabulous dressmaking things in this hour. I've got some books, I've got pattern paper, calico, loads of lovely dressmaking fabrics. I've got a tailor's ham, scissors and shears, and a clapper. Uh, loads to get through and some price crashes as well. So let's get started. We're going to start with the calico 25 meter bolt. Now this calico is quilters, pre-washed, pre-shrunk, 60 inch wide, beautiful quality calico. It works out at $4.99 per meter. You're saving the price almost of five meters of calico. You save £24.50 on that price. It's $124.99 and you can have two split pays. So you don't need to spend $124.99 today. And I realise it is a bit of an investment in a big bolt of calico, but it's so useful. £62.49 is all you need to pay today. Get this home. So next time you need to back a quilt, back it with calico. This is 60 inch wide. It's pre-washed, pre-shrunk. It's gorgeous quality, soft, supple cotton calico. Really lovely quality. Um, if you do table runners, cushions, things like that, lining bags, you use calico. You can dye calico. I mean, it does have quite a warm, creamy tan tone to it. And obviously the base colour of fabric will always affect what colour it will dye to. But it's a fabulous fabric. You can embroider on it, you can embellish and bead, you can print. And it's also super, super useful for things like creating your own blocks, and your um, uh, twirls for dressmaking, okay? So really, it's been hugely popular, hugely popular. Um, so I would really recommend this. It's a great thing to have in your stash. Absolutely brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Lots and lots in baskets. I'm just going to open this out so you can see it. it look, it is 60 inches wide. So, oh, you know, and it's incredible when you've got a resource like this. There's that 60 inches in width. When you've got this resource, you know, suddenly when you're getting towards the end of a project, you think, I don't need to think about what backing fabric am I going to use. I've got my calico and you'll cut yourself off half a metre and you'll finish that table runner because you've got the, the fabric there. You've got your spare wadding, your bits of wadding. You'll get it finished when you're doing those cushions and you think, oh, I'd like to quilt these. I need some fabric to go behind them for while I'm quilting. You've got your calico. If you want to improve your skills in free motion or straight line machine quilting, calico, spare wadding, create sandwiches, fuse them together with 505, practice your quilting on calico. I mean, it is terrific stuff. And even though 25 meters sounds like a lot, I reckon you could actually get through it quite quickly. I know I could. I know I could, I'd get through a 25 bolt, meter bolt of calico probably in a few months. And if you're a keen dressmaker and you twirl or you've got Helen Rhiannon's dressmaking, uh, the Easy Guide book, 
you know that you need about four or five uh, meters of calico right at the start just to make your basic bodice block and practice your things like sleeves and necklines well with a 25 meter bolt think of all the development the play the creativity um i was having lunch with fabulous Rebecca Harrison um, recently and we were talking about dressmaking and she said you know one of the best things that people could do potentially is to use calico to learn to drape to create shapes to create different sleeve styles different necklines different skirt styles well if you've got your calico you can do that because it's such an affordable fabric. It works out at $4.99 per meter. And remember, this is 60 inches wide, not 42 or 44 inches. So that's a huge amount of value in every single meter. You'll always have it there on hand. It will encourage you to experiment, to finish your projects. Um, also, if you like a country look, it's great for piecing with your scrap fabrics or your country style fabrics. It's also a really lovely surface to do things like red work or blue work embroidery on as well. It just, it's so useful. I love it. Right, I'm going to pop this down. It's a heavy old thing as well. Remember, you're only paying $3.95 postage, even if you're buying a massive bolt of calico. Right, next up, let's do the plain dressmaker's paper. Now, this is a great deal. This is prim dressmaker's tissue paper. Ah, oh, is this sold out? Ah, oh, we'll see, we'll see. It might have sold out. Right, we'll do Helen Rhiannon's book. This is Dressmaking the Easy Guide. Now, uh, this has been an amazingly popular book. And I love what Helen's done with this book, which is to rather than rather than try and make commercial patterns fit you. Helen says, let's make patterns that are designed for your body and then you don't have to start adapting them. You don't need to do a full bust adjustment or nip things in here or there because your pattern is created for your body. Now, that might sound like a huge undertaking if you're a beginner or even an experienced dressmaker, but it's not. It's not. The way that Helen has set this book out, it completely demystifies the process. So she's got all of the know-how for how to uh, set up your sewing machine, how to choose fabrics, how to create the look you want. She then goes into sewing language and how patterns are created and constructed. And then you get into those key skills. So it starts with taking measurements of your body. And once you've got those measurements, you're then going to use the patterns the blocks that are already provided for you. You're given base patterns. You're going to take those and you are going to make some changes to them that make those blocks, those patterns fit your body beautifully. Once you've created those basic patterns, you'll then cut them out of calico and you can sew them up, try them on, and if you need to make adjustments, you make adjustments to that calico toile. You also have loads of information in here on all the sort of classic places where you might need to make adjustments. So changing the waist, adding or taking away to hip measurements, maybe increasing or decreasing the fullness of the, the bust on the bodice. Now, these are skills that you can use for doing this, but also if you like buying commercial dress patterns or you've got some favorites that you just like to make fit better, you can use Helen's book to actually change those patterns so that they will fit you better too. So it's a really good all rounder. And then you have got a number of different uh, outfits, a number of different dresses, skirts, dresses. You can separate them out as well into tops and skirts as well if you like to do that. Um, it's a really, really fantastic book. Uh, it's Helen Rhiannon's Dressmaking the Easy Guide for 1999. 
Christine says, uh, Calico is amazing, Stuart. I remember at college, we did all our sewing samples for our files in Calico. Yeah, this is the thing. This is it. I used it for my fashion course, for French seams, flat lock, Hong Kong finish, and for practicing patterns and even for dyeing. It is, it's so adaptable. It's so useful. Thanks for that message, Christine. Now I've got another book. Um, this is by um, Elise Alex Jewell, and this is called Made to Measure. And this is an easy guide to drafting and sewing a custom wardrobe. You get 16 pattern free projects. Like the sound of that, like the sound of that a lot. So inside you've got the basics, you've got how to draft, fit and customize patterns. And I like the way she starts with, you can do it. And then draft it yourself projects, a wedding guest dress, a sheath skirt, a pre oh, a faux cute jumpsuit, page 98. I need to see that. Love a jumpsuit. Oh, oh, look at that. That's gorgeous. And it's actually a top and trousers, because I know girlfriends who, who have jumpsuits, you know, they're like, they're fantastic till you need the loo. But with this, it's actually separates. That's really clever. Really clever. Oh, there's some lovely patterns. Really, yeah, no, that's great. Like that jumpsuit. Cute, a shirt top and dress. And again, because they're, pattern free it means that they can be adaptable whatever your height whatever your measurements whatever your bust you know you can really really adapt every pattern so that you feel wonderful and feel fabulous in clothes that suit you and fit you i think that's the that's the main that's the main take for me about dressmaking it's about being able to feel authentically you because authentically you might be simple, plain, you know, no, no sort of frills, you know, nice sort of elegant lines. Or it might be sort of big, bold patterns, bright colours. And, you know, if that's not in fashion, you can really struggle to find the clothes you want. Whereas if you make your own, you can always be authentically you. Oh, that's beautiful. Gorgeous. Yep. Fab. That is Made to Measure by Elise Alex Jewell. What a lovely name. Mm, did she? Oh, it's lovely. It's a beautiful book. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Right. Um, we talked about rulers a lot today, haven't we? Um, one of the essentials for dressmakers is a curved ruler. I'm not seeing it on my desk. Ah, thank you. There we go. The curved ruler from So Easy, um, a brand I love. I love So Easy. Uh, my very first rotary cutter was a So Easy. I love the red markings. They're so easy to read on most fabrics. They're great. They're great. So you can use this when you're doing things like drafting or adapting your patterns. This is useful with um, both made to measure and the Easy Guide dressmaking books. Uh, you've got even got things like marking buttonholes as well, placement lines, um, notches, and just adapting patterns, very useful to have in your um, dressmaking toolkit. And again, what, look at that price, 9 99 for that. Yeah, it's a very, very useful thing to have. And we struggle to keep it in stock. Um, I do know that around sewing bee time, things like this are very, very difficult to find because everybody suddenly needs them. The last time we had really good stock of these was in July and um, we sold out. So we've recently got this back in stock. So if you've missed out in the past, now's your chance to get it at 9 99 That's a great deal. That's a great deal. 9 99 for that. Yes, it's really good, yeah. Can we do the clapper? 
because we're talking dressmaking, but also for quilters, the clapper is just such a useful tool. So Steph messaged in earlier on when Susie was doing pinwheels and said, how do you get the center really nice and flat? And one of the things we mentioned was a clapper. So what you would do with a clapper is you iron your seam, you press your seam open, you iron your dart, whatever it is that you're doing. And then usually with a bit of steam, if you can, you can't always do that with fabric, but you know, so you put some heat into your seam, you press it and then take your iron off and put your clapper straight on top and just leave it there for a minute or so. Enough time, it holds the heat in the fabric for a little longer. And as the fabric cools down, it cools down flattened. It's being held flat by, imagine if you press, especially springy fabric, if you press it and take the iron away, it starts springing up. And if it cools sprung up, that's how it will set. If it cools held completely flat, that is what it will stay like. So they're really useful. And I know a lot of quilters now are using clappers when they're pressing out their units or their blocks, especially those big joining seams so that everything lies as flat as possible. Uh, it's a great thing. It's also the kind of thing that you will probably only ever buy once. They're quality, they're all wood construction. There's nothing really there to break, to snap off, to wear out. You can't lose the charging cable. <laughs> it's one of those proper tools. They haven't changed much in a very long time. Number one reason, they don't need to. They do the job as beautifully then as they do now. So, so it's a lovely quality thing, 19.99. Um, I would use that incidentally with a wool pressing mat. And the reason why I'd use it with a wool pressing mat is a wool pressing mat will also hold the heat of an iron for longer. So even if you've got some, something like a, a fabric that you couldn't press, say like, um, it might be a faux leather, it might be a vinyl, it might be a plastic coated fabric that you want to get a crease out of. What you would do instead is iron your wool pressing mat Okay, get your wool pressing mat nice and warm, lay your delicate or, you know, fabric that won't behave on top and then put your clapper on top of the crease and it will hold the heat just where you need it. Let the whole thing cool down and that should do the trick. And if you need to work in sections, then do that. But it really can solve a problem, especially if you're using fabric that you can't just iron. Um, wool pressing mat also absolutely fantastic for patchwork, for dressmaking. You will get beautifully flat seams and it's also terrific for starch and press applique where you're pressing a seam allowance over and you want a really nice firm surface to do that on. A wool pressing mat is ideal. Um, these are double sided and uh, one little top tip for you that I do is I mark a corner, like an A and a B, just to encourage me to use both sides. I know it sounds really obvious, but we do just tend to just keep going on one side. And um, you can, of course, use both sides of the ironing mat. So I just, if I've got the A and the B there, it just prompts me sometimes to look and think, it's been A for a very long time. And I'll turn it over and just get better wear out of your mat. Just an idea, just something I do. So that's your wool pressing mat. Now, shall we look at some gorgeous fabric? Let's do some gorgeous fabric. Uh, let's do some William Morris. We had these yesterday. I have not seen these before. These are viscose and they are all William Morris. Now, this was a collaboration between Visage Textiles and the V&A Museum in London. So these are designs from William Morris from the V&A's archive, which have been beautifully and faithfully reproduced on high quality viscose for dressmaking. Um, I want to show you these different designs. Uh, they're all beautiful quality. Uh, Width-wise, they're 54 wide. 
I think they're 54 wide and just gorgeous, drapeable, very easy to sew. Um, Tracy Dennis from Owl and Sewing Cat uses a lot of viscose in her dressmaking patterns. Shell tops, kimono jackets, soft, you know, relaxed trousers or pajama style pants. Um, she does some lovely, lovely designs. Viscose is a, a fabulous fabric to use for them. This is classic Strawberry Thief. Look at the price, 649 per half meter. 6.49 per half meter. And look, this is how much you get. This might even be 60. That's 60 wide. That's 60 wide. Yeah, that's 60 wide. 6.49 a half meter. Is that the correct price, Ben? Did you? Beautiful, absolutely beautiful fabric. Uh, can we do willow, is it willow and bough? Ah, oh, willow and tulip, or tulip and willow. This is lovely, this is 549. Why is it cheaper? Oh, anyway, 549 per half meter. That's glorious, beautiful. There isn't a stretch in visco so it's very easy to sew with but it has got beautiful drape it's got beautiful drape look I'll just show you this was um, an early bird once that's why it's a little bit cheaper than the others it's a great price isn't it and gorgeous drape so if you're doing something like a top with like handkerchief sides it'll just drape beautifully that's a gorgeous design that isn't it even half a meter you could make a lovely um, scarf Something like that would be gorgeous. Now, next up, this is like a little all over blossom print. Is it orchard? Clover, thank you. Clover. We had this yesterday in bundles and this was the most popular design. It's a good all over, isn't it? Mm. 5.49 for a half metre. Gorgeous. Again, 60 wide, easy to sew, behaves itself. Behaves itself. Yeah, really nice that. Um, this next one is called Even Load. This is delicious. Um, Adam was actually using this for a, a shirt. Mmm. Yeah, it was lovely. It was called the Donny shirt from the Friday Pattern Company. Like a sort of boxy shirt. It was lovely. Um, very, very nice. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Such lovely colours. Again, 549 per half metre. You know, Ben, the first one, Strawberry Thief. Was that six ninety nine? Can that not go to five forty nine? Priority pick, no. But all the others are five forty nine. No, you can't. Oh, golden lily then. Golden lily. This is six forty nine as well. Beautiful, that isn't it? Beautiful. No, they're all the same. They're all the same. Yeah, gorgeous though, that, really lovely. Golden Lily. Again, this was a collaboration between Visage Textiles and the V&A Museum in London. So they are faithful reproductions of William Morris's original designs. Mm. Gorgeous, right. Should we do some other dressmaking fabrics? Now, shall we, okay, okay, can we start with HK40? Mm -hmm. Now, should be 399 and a half meter. This is a poplin. 
Okay, nice. I told you there was some price drops. Two ninety nine per half meter for this. This is cotton pop, uh, cotton poplin. That's lovely. Really nice. A rose and hubble. Lovely deep sort of clarity red in the background. Yeah, super. Two ninety nine and a half meter. That means by the meter, five ninety eight per meter. That's a brilliant price, isn't it? If you need two and a half meters for something, three meters, that really isn't working out dear at all. Three meters is going to be less than eighteen pounds. Yep, two ninety nine times six. Seventeen ninety four for three meters. That's absolutely fantastic. Beautiful. Oh, got a meter and a half left already. Uh, <laughs> we'll do that on all of the price crashes. We'll work out how much it would cost for three meters, shall we? And then we'll give you an idea just so that you know what your bundle price would be. I mean, for some things you might need three and a half meters. But um, we'll do our best. Right, next one is VQ86. This wonderful sort of deep pinky red uh, paisley. The paisley pattern was named after the paisley shawl. No, the paisley shawl was named after paisley, wasn't it, in Scotland? That's where the name came from. Two ninety nine per half meter. This is cotton poplin. So again, three meters would cost you seventeen ninety four. And just have a look at that. How gorgeous is that? I could imagine something like a shirt waster dress in that would be absolutely beautiful. A blouse. Really lovely. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, a shirt. Ben, what a lovely idea. Well, again, you'd only need two and a half meters probably for a long sleeve shirt. Two and a half meters at 2.99. Five times 2.99 would be 15, 14.95. 14.95. You can't even buy a shirt for that, can you? Not a nice one, you know? Let's do this one now. This is the same design, but kind of blues and, and rich browns. So NZ26. Derek, have you got your and shirting fabric? Nice. This is lovely. Look at this one. Ooh, that is so rich. Should be 355. It's 299 for the Rose and Hubble Cotton Poplin Paisley, 2 99 So £14.95 for two and a half metres. That's a bargain. £17.94 if you need three metres. But even if you needed three and a half, seven units of that, Ben, seven, and, seven units, three and a half metres at 2 99 I could work it out in my head, but £20.93 for three and a half metres of beautiful quality dressmaking fabric. Uh, you're welcome. You're welcome. I just lovely, isn't it? It's been super popular. Super popular. Loads you could do with that as well. You could definitely do a dress. Oh, a dress would be lovely. A dress would be gorgeous. Um, something like uh, like a tiered maxi dress. That would be delicious. A wrap dress with a nice deep wrap and a tie belt. That would be lovely. I think also that would be really lovely for bag making. I would line a chocolate brown faux leather messenger bag with that. Can you imagine that for the lining? Or as a backing fabric for something too. It's cotton poplin. And actually, top tip now, I often use dressmaking cotton or cotton poplin to back quilts. If they're more than 40 inches wide, so I can't use regular width quilters cotton, and they're not so wide that I would justify using extra wide quilt backing. So if they were, say, 45, 50, 54 inches wide, and I could find 60 inch wide cotton fabric for, uh, you know, backing, I'll use that. I'll use that. Right, on to the next one. 
proving very, very popular. Let's go with a pretty floral this time. This is MN14. I'm losing my Santa hat. MN14. This is gorgeous. This should be $3.99. You're paying $2.99 per half metre. And look at that. It was beautiful. That's absolutely gorgeous. I would hazard a guess, actually, that Helen Rhiannon would like that fabric because she loves Tilda florals for dressmaking. And I think that's a beautiful, it's not Tilda, it's from uh, Rose and Hubble, but it's got that sort of almost vintage floral feel. It's an amazing saving. I mean, actually, at £3.99 per half metre is a brilliant price. But if you're buying six metres, you're, you're saving £12 just by saving a pound per half meter. It's great, it's great. So under three pounds a half meter, 5.98 a meter is terrific. Easy care, easy to cut and sew. It's going to behave itself beautifully while you're working with this. And just lovely and fresh and summery. Just hold that up again so you can see. I just think that's the prettiest colour as well. Really gorgeous, isn't it? If you're very fair skinned or if you've got really warm toned skins, it's just going to look absolutely gorgeous. I think that would flatter any skin tone. That is just lovely, isn't it? Mm. Right, next up, let's do another floral. Uh, oh, let's do, let's do, oh gosh, this is lovely. This is like a gorgeous kind of traditional rose print. TN98. Look at that. Now that's giving me Sanderson vibes. This is Rose and Hubble, Cotton Poplin. You know where we're going. Should be, th oh, is it 3 dollars No, okay. Well, it's still really pretty. It's still really pretty. It's 3 dollars per half meter. So Ben, let's do the same, uh, three meters. So six units, 23 dollars uh, You can't argue with that. It's under 24 pounds for three meters. I, th yeah. I mean, I know we've got some even better deal, but that is still, that is a terrific fabric. Yeah, that's lovely. Beautiful for a sort of tea dress, 1950s style. Very nice, very nice. It would also be lovely just for a blouse, a skirt, um, but also as well, that would be gorgeous to use in quilt making. And you absolutely can mix cotton poplin with regular quilt weight cottons. It's not an issue. It's not an issue. You can mix them up. You could use that for a quilt backing as well. But yeah, a tea dress would be beautiful. Would be, be Tracy, I totally agree. Beautiful, beautiful fabric for a tea dress. And then we need to go dancing, don't we? We need to drink tea, eat scones and dance. The afternoon, it would be an afternoon event. Gorgeous, I love it. Or if you got invited to like a garden party, can you imagine? Right, next up, this again is super pretty. Uh, IH19. I love the colours in there. Love the colours. Uh, 355 for a half me. Oh, hello, here we go. 299. We're back. We're back. 299 for a half meter. Fab, that is lovely. That is lovely. Again, think about backing your quilts, you know? If they're even vaguely floral <laughs> or not. Or not. I mean, they're just lovely designs. I just want to measure these. I want to see what. What width we're talking here? I'll use my ruler, 21. So these are like 44, about 44 inches wide. So these are regular like quilt weight cotton width. So I'll just show you. That's gorgeous. 
So it might well be because it's that 44 inch wide fabric rather than 50 or 54. So you would need that little bit more. If you if you look in your dressmaking instructions, you'll usually have, you know, if it's 44 inch wide fabric, this amount. If it's 54, this amount. You might need two and a half or three. That, so, so just check that. But I mean, at 2.99 for a half meter, you can definitely put an extra half meter or or an extra meter in. Uh, that's beautiful. Absolutely lovely. Mm. And and also for children's wear, for children's wear, that would be absolutely gorgeous, wouldn't it? Really, really cute. Very pretty. Just a lovely scale. Smashing. It is a bit Liberty-esque. Now, next up. Oh, this is delightful. Uh, HK24. HK24. I love the colours. It's really jewel bright. That's lovely. Ooh. As soon as I see 355, I see 299. Yes, please. That's gorgeous. That's gorgeous. <laughs> Sue says, I love it when you pout on price on our behalf. I do. I do. Sue, I do. I've got your corner. I'm like, come on. What can we do here? I'm a negotiator. And Ben, Ben's a deal fairy. You're the deal fairy. You'll, you'll do it if you can. Uh, that's beautiful, isn't it? So you've got a real deep inky navy background and then these beautiful bright blossoms. That's just gorgeous. Children's wear you know, little summer dresses in that. Wouldn't that be fabulous? Really cute, really cute. Adorable, actually. Vian says, hi Stuart, what's Liberty's angel policy? That's a good question, uh, Vian. Um, I don't know with any certainty, I would say, I would suggest that I'd be very surprised if you couldn't make and sell with Liberty. The only time with fabrics that you can't make and sell is when it's licensed imagery. So obviously Liberty aren't licensing the imagery from anybody, it's their imagery. Whereas if it's a fabric that say got Superman on it or Harry Potter, where it's licensed from a film company, it's only licensed to be on fabric. You can sell fabric. You can't sell a bag made from the fabric because it's no longer fabric. It's classed as a bag. And somebody else will have bought the license to put the Harry Potter images on a bag. So that's why you can't do it. That's, why, that's how the, it works. With Liberty, I suspect you're absolutely fine. You can make and sell. I know lots of people that make and sell things made out of Liberty. This is gorgeous. You know me, I love black with colour. It just looks amazing. This is UL87. This is a Rosen Hubble cotton poplin. We've already dropped the price, 2 99 a half metre. That's delicious, isn't it? Juicy and bright. Oh, oh, okay. Tossed pink flowers. It is 2 dollars half meter. Yes, there we go. There we go. 2 dollars half meter. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Again, stash it. If you're not sure what you're going to do with the fabric, stash it. Because at these prices, this is like Boxing Day sale, isn't it? Don't you think? I won't be here on Boxing Day. It's Vix, isn't it? It's Vix. I will be back on New Year's Eve. So you can see the new year in. Well, we, I, we won't be here at midnight. Um, I'll be seeing the new year in at 
1 p.m. Because <laughs> I'm that kind of party animal. I'll be in bed by eight o'clock for sure. Uh, <laughs> we could do a faux New Year, couldn't we? You know, like you do with young children where you set the clock wrong. So you can say, yay, it's the New Year. Now go to bed. And everyone's like, it's 7 p.m. It's like, shh. Yes, we'll do fireworks and everything. This is lovely. This is SE80. Another paisley, gold, lilac, that black background. Beautiful, we're doing it. 3.99 to 2.99, 25% off. Yes, please. Yes, please. Quilt backings, bag linings, shirts, blouses, dresses, all good. All good, beautiful. Uh, we had the that gorgeous quilted jacket pattern on yesterday. Layer this up with H640 or 8020 wadding, backing fabric, quilt it, make a jacket. It's luscious, absolutely gorgeous. Right, I have two more of these lovely fabrics to share with you. This one is BI62. Oh, this is smart. This has got quite a nice sort of chic, modern feel to it, hasn't it? It's called Sage Floral, which is really saying what it does on the tin. It's 2 and a half metre. Fabulous. You're saving 56 pence per half metre, which adds up. It really does add up. It really does add up. Brilliant. Yeah, it's gorgeous. It's really lovely. Just hold that up so you can see. I think that would make a rather nice shirt. Oh, you could line a jacket with this. You could definitely line a jacket with this. That would be gorgeous. Use it as a, you know, yes, where you would use a cotton lining. Yeah, for sure. It's super, isn't it? Gorgeous colour as well. Really lovely. Last fabric that we're going to do one of these crashes on, I think, I hope, is GD87. Just a lovely multi floral. How cute is that? It's never been crashed before, I can tell you that. Is today the day, Ben? Oh, yes, it is. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Ben. Two ninety nine and a half metre. Fabulous. That's lovely. Again, children's wear would be lovely. You could do a really nice, just a whole cloth child's quilt with this, couldn't you? Layer that up with a plain fabric on one side, batting in the centre, quilt the whole thing and bind it. Or put a bobble trim around the outside edge. It would just be lovely. If you can hear any strange noises in the studio, by the way, it's Jimmy from Hobby Maker making his presence felt. There he is looking guilty. Give us a hair. See, you just don't care. Pulling Velcro. You were trying to pull Velcro as quietly as you could. Can't do it. Can't do it. You can't do it. Just, just take a minute. Just tear it. It's like taking off a plaster. Done. Do it now. Done. He's done it. Done. He's done it. We can all relax. It's like tearing off a plaster. Right, uh, what next? Okay, well this is a jersey. This is IA82. Ooh, this is cute. This is really cute. Should be 7.99 a half meter. Look, at a 5.99 a half meter. Now I'm thinking, look, you, this is, this is two, four way stretch. Look at the stretch on that, that's fab. So I'm thinking like sort of yoga, yoga pants, leggings, you know, a nice lounge wear, a nice stretchy jersey top, t-shirts, yeah, really nice, really nice. And look as well, extra wide, 
Look. I need longer arms. That's cute. Yeah. Really nice. Um, just looking for composition. Do we have composition? It'll certainly have spandex or lycra in there, won't it? But easy care, easy care. Digital print as well. Lovely. Yeah, thanks, Ben. Just looking at the composition of that. That's really cute, isn't it? Love that. Definitely things like yoga pants. Um, Steph's messaged in, wishing you a happy Christmas, Stuart, and thinking of all of you who've lost loved ones this year. That's a really nice message. Absolutely, yeah. You know, Christmas kind of, you spend time with the ones you love, but you also think about the ones that aren't there, you know? So it's bittersweet sometimes, isn't it? But, you know, it's lovely just to think about those special people as well. All right, that, I don't know what the composition of that is, but it's lovely and stretchy. Talking of lovely and stretchy, Jimmy. <laughs> QP74. <laughs> well, I said that because when I said talking of lovely and stretchy, Jimmy suddenly went as if I'd said his name. <laughs> this is gorgeous. Oh, I like this. And the colour. <gasps> Five ninety nine. This is Ochre Soft Touch Jersey. That is really, really lovely. This has just got. This is that two way stretch. I think four way stretch. Four way stretch. Four way stretch. Night. No, gorgeous, isn't it? It's sort of the colour of Buddhist monks' robes. That sort of beautiful saffron ochre colour. Beautiful. Almost like the colour of turmeric. Beautiful. Love that. And also as well, the inside, the wrong side, is sort of almost like a brushed cotton. It's really soft. So if you're making something like uh, PJs or a lounge suit out of this, it would be super comfy. That's lovely. Liking that. Liking that very much. Uh, next up... This is SN15. Oh, now this is rather smart. This is scuba crepe and in a nude. Oh, that's very, very, you know, sort of, um, oh, oh, we are just, stop it. 2 .99. that's for scuba. That's fantastic. That's the sort of, that's sort of Saint Tropez colour, isn't it? That, you know, when you see somebody walking towards you wearing this colour, you know they're absolutely minted. Do you know what I mean? So that's sort of where it's like a dress and a jacket and shoes all in that colour. You just think, yeah, gorgeous. Very, very beautiful. Love that colour. Love that colour. Actually, wouldn't that make a lovely wrap? It would make a beautiful wrap or scarf, actually. And two ninety nine for half a metre. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. OK, a couple more fabrics to go. Uh, I've got a beautiful printed cotton canvas. This is OL40. Now, we had this in a bundle, actually, last week, I think, with Lucy Pixley, and she'd done a lovely bag. She'd done a lovely bag. She had done a beautiful, beautiful bag using this, and she teamed it with some of our cotton canvas in, like, a lovely wine, like a clarity colour. Check this out. Uh... Hello, six ninety nine for half a meter, and look, it's extra wide. Isn't that gorgeous? That would be really nice, actually, to make something like a jacket out of. A little shorty jacket, in that. Yeah, yeah, just that nips in at the waist. Very, very nice. Love that. 
Love that. Almost denim jacket style, but in a floral cotton canvas. I love kind of mixing up designs like that. Or oh, brilliant for bag making. Right, I've got some black. I think this is a scuba, is it? WN43? Oh, stre a stretch cotton. Nice. Again, be good for something like um, smart work trousers. A little bit more of a fitted trouser, but look, you've got that stretch. So you'll still be able to move. Still be able to move in that. You've got that little bit of stretch. So if you do make sort of trousers, maybe like sort of cigarette leg pants, something like that, it would still give you movement. You're saving a pound on the half meter, 3.99 for that. This a lining. I've got a gold lining fabric and I've got some, yeah, I've got TE04. So this is a gorgeous gold lining fabric. Am I right? Or is this like a faux silk? Oh, a silky satin. Oh, you won't believe the price of this. Should be 4 99 $1.99. That's amazing. One ninety nine for that. Little shell top. Little shell top. Or, or what about a nightdress? Or a halter top? Because look, look at how it drapes. Look at how it drapes. How beautiful is that? <coughs> Bridal tool. This is RO92. This is bridal tool, white tool or bridal veiling. Um, you can use this for like things like confetti quilting, or you can use this for veiling, obviously, of course, or you know for things like um, like an underskirt as well. You can use that a little bit like knitting. Gorgeous! Wow. Let's do the menu for tomorrow. Right, eight a.m. 20% off instructions. So it's all about patterns and instructions with big savings. Uh, at 9 a.m., Emma Bradford is here with the Seth Apter Watermark Quilt Kits. I'm intrigued. I'll be watching. At 10 a.m., we've got designer fabric bundles. And then at 11, we've got a temperature quilt with Emma Bradford. I love the idea of that. At 12, it's sewing machines. Now, who's presenting tomorrow? Is it John? Yeah, it's John tomorrow. So, have fun. Uh, have a wonderful Christmas. This is my last uh, day before Christmas. So, have a wonderful Christmas. Enjoy yourselves. Eat, drink and be merry. And uh, we will gather together again after Christmas. Um, lots of love to everyone. Mm -hmm. Love you all. Take care. See you soon. <laughs>